Not quite in a flight to actually see, but just enough to be spotted by a predator. Um. There we go. Hi, everyone is up but me, so. Uh, gotta stream to these people. Go live. Okay. How did these girls learn to glow? I just wrote the script for the Fenica and Ramsey doll advertisement. Yam is also going to be late today. It's too busy being adorable somewhere. Sounds like someone is hobgobbling back. Alright, I'm here. Still waiting on Siv. What did he get up to do? Um, I think just get water. Okay. Um... So last time, we're in the middle of case two. Our friend, uh, Japanese Edgar Allan Poe, has been accused of murder again, yep. immediately. Uh, he was having a Shakespeare debate with a guy named Shamspear, uh, when Shamspear was somehow poisoned and is now blaming him for it. Uh, but Shamspear is alive. I like that this game has cases where people don't die. I think that's really interesting. I'm kind of surprised it took e. them until this game to do that. Because um, this is like, the what, the ninth game in this franchise? Um, and, oh yeah, I guess Happy Pride Month, considering all of our playthroughs are extremely gay. <laughs> I'd say extremely LGBT, but like, no, it's just we always make our protagonists gay. I shouldn't say we. I always make my protagonists gay. I mean, we help. Dun, dun, dun. I also started editing down Dogs in Love, and the people who uh, do art for it have started doing art for it. Though I got to imagine that's going to take a couple weeks. It's going to take a couple weeks for the person who does the Pokemon art. The dude who does the human art did it in one night. <laughs> and it was three characters. Um, I don't fully remember what was going on in this case. I remember that as a joke, I left myself off in the middle of a... Uh, a question that I super didn't know the answer to and I'm about to lose points on. But basically we spent the first part of the trial proving that this guy was making fake coins out of ice in order to uh, basically scam a coin operated gas pump so that he didn't have to pay for gas. And now the jury is like, I don't know about this guy. I don't know if his testimony is reliable since he's a liar. Siv gets one more minute. I am here. I am a liar. Okay. My tea kettle just popped, so I have to pour my tea. You can start, and I'll just mosey on in when I get my tea. Okay. I'm also making the tweet. Oh, yeah, I super didn't do that. Uh, I guess I'll do that. God, I had no time to set that up. Twitter. 
Boop. The usual. More Ace Attorney. Live! That's good enough. Alright, here we go. Y'all the cool people are already here. <laughs> the people who can adhere to a schedule. Um... I believe right. it's pronounced schedule. Does it make any difference? Yes! No! This isn't over! The defense will not rest! Will, did you get up? Uh, Will actually boobily duped. I think Will's uh, computer might have fucked up. You love to see it. All right. Yeah. Good but job. Uh, have fun soloing this, BRB. Cool. But, Counsel, you've successfully explained everything. Uh, you've identified and substantiated the unscrupulous method employed by Mr. Shamspear to consume gas. Uh, what more is there to discuss? Lord Van Zeeks just highlighted three facts in order to make his point. But contrary to what he would, uh, to what he would have the court believe, not all of them have been objectively established at all. What are you trying to say, my Nipponese friend? At least one of those so-called facts is an assumption made due to a lack of evidence. <clears throat> but the situation has changed now following the cross-examination of the latest witness to take the stand. Don't be absurd. What is this nonsense? Yes, when you bring everything we've learnt so far together and consider it as a whole, it's clear. Is it? There's a question that we now need to reconsider. Namely, was someone else responsible? Was there another visitor? Was the poison in the tea? Uh, I don't really remember. So, if anyone knows for sure, feel free to let me know, because I, I super don't remember. Um... This is what happens when you jokingly fuck yourself and then uh, another visitor poison the tea. Yeah, tea is my assumption because I I have to imagine. Thank you, chat. We've all been led to believe that the strychnine poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear was in the tea brought to him by Mr. Natsume, but that's conjecture at best. Objection! The victim has testified that nothing else passed his lips that night. There is no other possibility. And since there was no trace of the tea left at the scene, okay. As I said, the situation has changed. Because, in fact, some of Mr. Natsume's tea was left at the scene. And a particular piece of evidence proves it. Objection. A ludicrous claim. Scotland Yard detectives investigated the scene exhaustively. What evidence are you suggesting they missed? The defense has made a bold claim indeed. Very well, counsel. Present your proof. What evidence from the tri- uh, It's the pair of teacups, right? A little kiss. Just a little one. That's I think the proof. It's the pair of teacups because we took them, so they weren't- They weren't investigated, I think. Yee! Uh, I'm gonna text Will and ask what's up. Okay. No, says someone. Nope. What's the question? What evidence from the scene of the crime can tell us about the nature of the defendant's tea? Uh, it's brought from Soseki. He was the one who brought it up. And he's never... He's... It's, it's like new tea. So, uh, chat, you're being... Uh, you're giving me multiple different answers, so I actually don't know. Do we examine the teacups? Uh, I don't know. Why don't we examine the teacups? Because that's the type of shit that will fuck you in this game. Mm-hmm. That little ring. This must be the cup that Mr. Shamspear was drinking from them. It's stained on the inside. Uh, tea does that, I'm afraid. Even green tea. Oh, really? I've never noticed that before. Yeah, also the, uh, the, the stain in the photograph would be tea. That's also correct. Right. Yeah. Well, I never leave it in the cup long enough to leave a mark. I like to gulp it down. Drink tea while it's hot. That's the Japanese way, isn't it? Oh dear, so many people seem to have the wrong idea about our culture, and most of them are Japanese! Okay. Hello, are you back? Hi. Hi! Hi. Okay. About the Come nature on. of the defendant's tea. I moved all my stuff. Could be this. It's the teacup. You guys are completely unhelpful. 
I'm literally getting like 50 50. Jello, it's not that. What does that mean? I'm gonna look it up. You guys are useless to me. <laughs> Great. Ace, attorney, two, resolve, guide, case two. Case two. Oh, this game only has four cases. Huh. Though the third case looks enormous. Uh oh. Okay. Ba -doo -boo -ba -doo -boo. Examine the pair of teacups. It was the. Oh, wait, no, hang on. As the trial begins. Fuck, it's so hard to remember where I am. If I if I'm guessing correctly, we seem pretty far into it. Yeah, I, I think, think we're past we're, the halfway point at least. Yeah, we're definitely gonna finish. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, we're mm, well, we're not that far yet. Oh no, we actually have a lot more than I thought. Uh, okay. Ooh, okay. I think Alamont Gas Company raised an objection. Okay, it is the bar of soap. Huh. Oh yeah, that's what the tea was for. Do I need to examine it again? No. Take that! Good gracious. The soap again? I didn't see what that said. Yes, that's right, my lord. It's just come back to me. Something about when we first found this bar of soap at the scene yesterday. So hang on, sorry. Trying to readjust tabs. It's more bar of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside a window? The window needs washing. Funny joke. Oh. This is this is solid washing up liquid. God damn it. <laughs> I'm quite certain that when we originally stumbled upon the bars of soap, there was actually a frozen coin in each bar. So, you discovered the gas thief's coin factory. Fascinating. In a way, yes, oh. but there's more. Um chat points out that apparently the third VOD for the fifth case isn't actually saved in the playlist for the greatest yeah. attorney playthrough. I, I saw. Thought. I'm not, I mean, it's, it's, I, I got all the videos. It's just not in the playlist. The, oh, okay. All right. The coins we found in the soap at the time weren't normal ice. Then there was something strange about them, you mean? Exactly. Something very obviously strange. They were red. Red mo? The ice was red. No, you mean. That's right. It's obvious to me now. The fake coins in the soap were made from frozen tea. Mm. We we what? sure were like we figured out this case up to this point from literally the investigation and everything up until now has been us going, God, what order do they want us to present this in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would remind the court of a statement made by Mr. Natsume earlier in this trial. For what it's worth, I do- I am so poor! <laughs> that <laughs> evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamspear's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! I will never touch tea again! Never! Ah, yes. I believe there had been a snowfall that day. It was particularly cold. Sadly, on such occasions, the poorly constructed water mains in the East End are prone to freezing. So on the night in question, Mr. Shamspear, having no running water to use, was forced to use the tea brought by Mr. Natsume in order to make his fake coins. My word! Jello, I'm telling you right now, you figured out 50% of it. No, we figured out 100% of it. I said, to this point of the case. <laughs> There were two bars of soap in the window ledge. I, I penalize you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when my judicial assistant and I investigated the scene. I'm here too. Yes, hello, that's me. I am her. <laughs> Which means that even as we speak, some of the defendant's tea is still present at the scene of the crime. Frozen solid in a bar of soap outside Mr. Shamspear's window. Extraordinary. Earlier today, Inspector Gregson informed the court that if even one drop of the tea remains, Scotland Yard would be able to analyze it for poisson. As such, we are now in a position to poive or dispoive. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> By finding out for sure whether or not Mr. Natsume C actually contained a storage nine at all. Storage nine, Homestar! <laughs> <laughs> you smug Nipponese. My lord, we cannot do the defendant the injustice of passing judgment now. The police should be dispatched to recover the remaining bar of soap from the scene at once, and the defense requests a thorough analysis of the frozen tea embedded in it to determine whether or not it contains any poison. Oh my god, I put fucking Dijon must honey Dijon mustard on my little cheese and crackers. It tastes so good, I'm gonna die. <laughs> bailiff, bailiff, instruct the police to attend the scene at once. <laughs> Hmm. Yam is not here yet. She'll be in shortly. It would seem that we have no choice but to suspend these proceedings for the time being. I trust you have no objection, Lord Van Zeeks. I am a racist. None, my lord. Scotland Yard will recover the tea from the scene and carry out the requisite tests immediately. The trial will resume at the same hour tomorrow. The prosecution and defense yeah. may conduct further investigations as appropriate in the interim. Yes, my lord. No. Mm. Well, we managed to scrape through there somehow. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned until tomorrow. Well, that's stream. See you guys next week. Bye. See you next week. Yeah, I wish I'd known that we were like literally one press away from the, the break point last time. I mean, how, how could you know? The judge will now go enjoy his birthday. I like the idea that every time court is in session, it's the judge's birthday. <laughs> I have the worst birthday parties. And depending on which country you're in, I have multiple each year. <laughs> Korean birthday. <laughs> Where's our stuff? Whew. Oh, we got kicked out. Oh, I guess this is back in time when we just moved in. Mm. Oh, we made it back in one piece. Just, to be perfectly honest, I thought we were finished there for a while. Oh, I know. What a lot of close shaves. I couldn't read that properly. I had no yeah, idea what she was trying I, to say there. I th I also read it as, we were a bunch of close shaves. I was like, yeah, what? I was like, what the hell, Susano? You're not British enough for that. <laughs> There's so many carriages on the streets of London. You were very nearly flattened several times. Oh, uh, no, I didn't mean that. Yes, I know. It was a marvelous defense, Naruhoro-san. It really was. I was in awe of you. Oh, um... Thank you. And now that your fervent exploits have won us some more precious investigation time, let's see if we can't find some new clues for court tomorrow. Yes, let's do that. Ow. Is everything all right? No, let's do that. I suppose. I still can't quite believe it, that's all. That I'm here in England, working as a lawyer, I mean. In the old Bailey, no less. Hmm. Truth I'm is. staring directly into your soul right now. <laughs> no, no, no. Give. I am whispering directly into your ear right now. <laughs> I want you to go down to Scotland Yard and see if they have family too. <laughs> he has too. <laughs> the truth is, it shouldn't be me, should it? It should be him standing in my shoes. It should be Kazuma. Yes, it should be Ryutaro. I mean, it was Kazuma Sama's wish that you follow him to Great Britain and work alongside him. Yes. I mean, I never had the chance to ask him directly why, but he clearly had a plan. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. And you're doing wonderfully, Naruhodo-san. I've no doubt that Kazuma-sama would say exactly the same if you were here with us. Thank you, Suzato-san. Thank you. They resolve all plot threads in this game by having Suzato transition into a male, and uh, her new name is Kazuma. <laughs> This is a little fucked up, all right? It was just a little bit fucked up, you guys. Thanks, Pat Patrick Warburton. <laughs> no. It was quite a shock earlier today, wasn't it? When the victim himself turned up in court and took the stand. I know. Not only that, but then finding out that he's actually a barefaced gas thief as well. Yes, that was certainly a surprise to us all. 
For a while, it seemed as though everyone had quite forgotten about Soseki-san poisoning the tea. Careful of your phrasing, Susato-san. He didn't poison anything. And there's more to this Mr. Shamspear than we yet know. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Mr. Shamspear certainly wasn't the noble, upstanding man that everyone thought he was. Hmm. What's become of him, actually? Oh, he died. I was told that he'd be returning to the hospital ward where he was receiving treatment. Oh, which one is that? Oh, that same shitty old one. Let me see. Ah, yes, see, it's at St. Bartholomew's on Bouts and... Or Bots, as Londoners call it. We know that place, don't we? Yes, we visited Miss Green there yesterday. It's the same hospital to which she was taken. Ah, yes, after Soseki-san stabbed her in the back. You be careful of your phrasing, Naruhoto-san. He didn't stab anyone. Perhaps we both owe Soseki-san an apology. Saint yes. Bartholomew's. Yes, we should probably visit the hospital later. What hospital should we visit? So, we know that Soseki-san took the tea to the victim on the night in question. But he isn't the culprit then, obviously. Yes, the poison... Uh, sorry, the poisson surely wasn't in the tea. But if that's the case, how on earth did the poisson get into Mr. Shamspear's body? I'm sure we'll find a clue at the scene. There must be something in Mr. Shamspear's room that will help solve the mystery. Well, naturally, Scotland Yard detectives have been over the place already. But it couldn't hurt for us to have another look around, I think. Oops, sorry. Yeah! And I'm desperate to know the outcome of the investigation into the tea left in the bar of soap. Well, if we run to Inspector Gregson, we could ask him about that. Did he wash his hands with it? Kazuma Asagi. The best friend I ever had. Looks and directly into the camera. Happy pride. <laughs> and a lawyer with such promise. He really saved my bacon in that horrible incident just before we left Japan. I love that phrase. <laughs> it's very Will energy. Hey, you... that's Ryanosuke's bacon! <laughs> <laughs> I can still picture him now, looking so fierce and determined in court, as hot as the bacon fresh off the griddle that had just been Damn stolen. Damn you, Denny-san! <laughs> Denny-san! <laughs> and then after the trial, that crazy idea he came up with. Hey, what if we got some from the grocery store? We don't a need Denny's. As a stowaway? Yes, you can fit inside my trunk if you curl up small enough, I'm sure. No one will know. <laughs> Kazuma, won't you tell me why? Why go to these lengths so that I can accompany you to Great Britain? Well, it's been on my mind ever since we got through that trial. But you really ought to go into law. Be a defense lawyer. You've got a natural talent for it. Believe me, I guarantee it. But I've never even thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, I can't force you, obviously. You have to decide for yourself. But anyway... London is the cultural capital of the world, the city at the forefront of everything. Can't hurt you. It can't hurt for you to see it. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's true. I suppose, though, if you were to become a lawyer, then one day... One day what? Oh, no. Never mind. Huh? I made a tweet about this like literally two days ago that was just foreshadowing in video games be like <laughs> someone says something and then someone else says dot dot dot. Yeah. Not a hot or some. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about Kazuma. Me he too. Got, he got a donk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's forever in my donk thoughts too. <laughs> Ah, forever in my donk thoughts, my favorite song Air about alpacas. <laughs> Rid, rest in donk. <laughs> to change the Japanese judicial system for the better, that was his dream. And that's why he so desperately wanted to come to Great Britain to study, of course. Yes, that's right. But... Hmm? Yes? Never mind. I do wonder if his true intentions lay elsewhere sometimes. I don't know, the thought just takes hold of me every now and then, that's all. Maybe his thoughts were elsewhere. Quick cut to him, just like staring at Ryanosuke's ass. Naruhodo-san, what do you mean by Kazuma-sama's true intentions? I meant that it's the least natural looking animation in this game, so VR videos be like... I mean this. <laughs> 
Katana? I never expected to inherit this sword after Kazuma passed away, of course. No, I know. It was because I asked you to take it. When I have it at my side in court, I feel as though... It gives me courage. I keep my opium in my sword. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, the night before he died, he told me a little about the sword. It kills people Act if you hit them with it. If you draw it, you'll realize it's actually a large Pez dispenser. Karuma. That's right. It's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asuki clan. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryanosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Karuma guides me. I truly believe that. So its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two. Not that you would need much compelling. On that subject... There's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. Something you have to do? Yes. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Uh, of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see it through to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. What did he mean by something very important that I have to do? I had hoped that the answer to that question would become apparent when we arrived here, but... As yet, I found not a single clue. That's not what it said. <laughs> Alright. This is our meager house. Perhaps we should put this spade away somewhere. That's not a spade, Naruhodo-san. It's a shovel! No, shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. This joke was never funny. No, spades are for digging. Something, something, something. Well, Wait, have we done this before? Uh, it's don't, don't worry about it. It's a old version of an Ace Attorney joke. That was never funny. Someone told me we get an achievement if we do that. I think I probably got it in the last game. Mm -hmm. I heard there's another room behind that door. Oh, no. Let's, let's just go. <laughs> Let's leave. Let's I'm up. done. I'm out of here. I hate Britain. Let's go. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if on this list of places to travel, one of them was just Japan, as though you could just freely transport yourself? Go home. Oh, I wanna, we're back in Japan. I want to go here in case Iris is here and we can talk to her. Her so, so cute. Yay. Oh, no, no. I'm Susie. Hooray. You're back. Oh, I get to talk to myself. Lovely. Hello, <laughs> Iris. You're in fine spirits as always, I see. I am. And you look as immaculately presented as ever, Susie. Oh, you flatter me. You don't think I would look better in boys' clothes? <laughs> oh, I think you would look lovely. Well, you couldn't have come at a better time. I've just made a pot of tea. I'll set some cups. Of course I'd support, support you, Susie. Look at my colour scheme. I'm practically a trans flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. Really? Thanks, Iris. But actually, what is that foul smell? Aha! I shit my pants! I shit my <laughs> pants! The wanderers return at last! Where on earth have you pair the pair of you been? Um, we've been in court. Oh, for Mr. Mustache's case. That was today, wasn't it? I'm sure I mentioned it only yesterday, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure you think you did. <laughs> well, we can laugh about it now. So tell me, how did the trial go? Reasonably well so far. We've managed to escape without a guilty verdict, at least. Really? I would have liked to see it. And I must pass the time of day with Mr. Re- Oh. And I must pass the time of day with Mr. Reaper again. It's been too long. Is Lord Van Zeeks an acquaintance, Mr. Sholmes? Naturally! There's not a person in the world who doesn't know my name, Mr. Naruhodo. Not quite what I asked, but still. That funny little elf slipper he's got in the back. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, might you be able to sign my hallowed chalice? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, whatever is that odor? Yes, what is it? It's faint, but absolutely awful. Ah, indeed! That's the scent of victory, my dear fellows! Victory in science! I'm the first man to have ever shit his pants! <laughs> A new invention! 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right. I'll bite. What's he up to now? <laughs> Ignore her. <laughs> Lord Baron von Zeeks. Yes. Barak! Sorry, I thought it's, I straight up said that it was Lord Baron Duke Viscount Van Zeeks. Yes, it's an Pharaoh Mayor. I actually don't know the word after interesting. Does anyone know how to say that? Sobriquet? Sobriquet. Sobriquet? Sure. Yes, it's an interesting sobriquet he has, isn't it? The Reaper of the Bailey. Ah, oh, is that a synonym for epithet? Finally, another word I can use. <laughs> Once the legendary prosecutor has fought for someone's conviction, that person is doomed. Even if he or she is found not guilty by the courts, sooner or later the hapless soul will vanish from the capital. But vanish how, exactly? He sends them to America! By falling under a passing carriage, or drowning in the Thames, or succumbing to a sudden fever, or quite out of the blue being set upon by a highwayman. There are numerous routes to one's final terminus, my dear fellow. It all seems a little far-fetched, really. Well, on the bright side, Mr. Mustache is fighting fit. For the time being, at least. It's not overly reassuring. Oh, goodness, I've almost spilled my tea. What the fuck? If the rumors are true, though, the obvious conclusion would surely be that there's acquitted her well by Lord Van Zeeks's own hand. As it so happens, Miss Suzato, that is quite impossible. He's actually a weenie. <laughs> oh, why? Naturally, the man very quickly came under such suspicion. However, when these, whenever these incidents occurred, the Reaper always had a cast-iron alibi. Really? Oh, I see. God, he's handsome. And so his reign continued. But five years ago, he vanished from the courts, never to appear as a prosecutor again. That is, until you arrived in the country, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, so I've heard. In fact, it was the very day I arrived when I was thrust into that trial at the Old Bailey. That bitter fight to the death coincided with the Reaper's resurrection, and really did end bitterly, indeed. And here you are, facing Mr. Reaper again. Oh, you know, I had biscuits in my mouth, she I'm just, quite sorry. She just walks up. Holly, you smell like shite! <laughs> Have you shit your drawers again, sir? Holly? My newest invention! <laughs> the depoopinator! Oh, you know, I don't know if you're just incredibly unlucky. You know, back in the day, wizards used to just shit in their robes. No, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Chocolate frogs are actually made of styrene! Or incredibly unlikable. <laughs> I think it goes deeper than just me. I sense a general loathing of old Japanese people. Oh no, do I need to- Racism! Do I need to teach Iris what racism is? <laughs> Japanese people! <laughs> With Mr. Natsume, who I'm currently defending being Japanese as well as Miss Suzato and myself, I felt it even more keenly in court today. Poop group! Poop how we came into this world! For some reason, Lord Van Zeek seems to have an inherent disdain of the Japanese. Indeed, it is an interesting observation. That's a polite way of phrasing that. Do you know something about it? Do you, Mr. Sholmes? Mm. It was about ten years ago that Beric von Zeeks chose to enter the legal profession. However, before that time, the young man's closest companion hailed from the Empire of Japan. No! What the? Tell us more, Mr. Sholmes. Whatever happened? I believe I've made it clear before. I'm unable to tell you anything about the affair. Oh, but... The veil will be lifted on the events of the past in due course, I have no doubt. For now, however, it is Mr. Mustache who is most deserving of your attention, I believe. All right, for real, what is that? So, what is that indescribably foul smell? Ah, well, probably this, I would say. What is that? I've learned to shit blue! <laughs> <laughs> my dear fellows, it is, of oh, course, my- you know what? Rick could tell you what that is. Who? Rook! Oh. Uh, this is true. I, I literally didn't hear you, which is why I asked. A chemical test that can identify whether or not a, a tea is genuine at the drop of some tea. Oh my! 
There are some unscrupulous sorts manning the stalls along some of London's less frequented streets. They regularly sell what purports to be a high-quality tea, but is in fact merely, uh, merely dried leaves of drab flavor. Well, that is certainly unsavory behavior. <laughs> oh. So, when one is presented with what appears to be black tea, one must be careful. Iris? Yes? I look silly. <laughs> Up the ready, hurry. Catch throws the cup. Let us have a drop of my chemical. No, no, dude. Don't put the chemical in there. Let us add a drop of my chemical to this cup of tea here. You'll see what happens. Oh, it turns into coffee. It's turned completely black. And what a oh, foul odor it's giving off. Indeed. The blacker the tea becomes, the more foul the odor, the better the tea is. It would appear that this cup was a particularly fine Darjeeling. Pro mm -hmm. Probably said that wrong. That's no, you got it. very ingenious. But what do you do with that black liquid now? Why, dispose of it naturally. Surely you wouldn't like to drink it, would you? There does seem to be a rather obvious problem with your new invention, Mr. Sholmes. And why this chemical test is merely a test, my dear madame. Right. The point is, we are entering a new era of science in the world of criminal investigation also. It also seals the mouth of a random passersby. <laughs> I regularly engage in this scientific experimentation alongside my unofficial consulting detective work. Hence, uh, the Herlock Sholmes method will be the foundation upon which modern investigative technique is based. This little tea incident. Indicant? Indicant. 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 I've never seen that word. A lot of those today. As in, like, to indicate? Mm. This little tea indicant was a happy byproduct of my ongoing forensic science research. Forensic science. I suppose I should find out more about that. <laughs> Someone in chat. We're entering a new age of science. Here, blow into the DS microphone. <laughs> so, your tea test is an example of forensic science. Indeed it is. An essential tool in cases that hinge on the knowledge of whether some tea is of high or inferior quality. Not a huge number of cases, then. Perhaps a more practical example is required. Fingies. Not yet accepted in our courts as evidence, I might add. Really, we are dragging our heels here. I hadn't mm -hmm. even heard of them until recently. Which is partly why I undertake research in this field myself, of course. Does that mean you're studying fingies, Mr. Sholmes? There are others in that field already, and I abhor the company of inferior minds. No, what I am researching is skin prints. You dumb fucker. Skin prints? A nomenclature of my own design, as is this chemical agent that makes it possible. I like that they actually have him using the chemicals that are on his butt all the time. Mm -hmm. It instantly reveals objects touched by whichever person is under investigation. Oh, so it's an, a, an oil indicator. Please don't mm -hmm. call it skin prints. Brilliant, Mr. Sholmes. As long as it doesn't turn everything completely odorous and black. I assure you, my dear fellows, you will witness my forensic talents in action very soon indeed. Goodbye. Oh, no. I put my cracker on upside down. Well, I think we should go back to the scene and see if we can uncover any new clues. That's the spirit, Vino. See you later. Oh, yes. Until later. No, no, Mr. Sholmes. We were thinking you'd come with us. You were? Yes, of course. You said so just a moment ago. You said we'd witness your forensic talents in action? Ah, yes, I do recall saying something along those lines. But you go on ahead. I shall be sure to follow you later. In all likelihood. Probably, maybe. Well, I might. Your commitment astounds me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Sholmes. We'll eagerly await your arrival. I love her dumb simping for Sholmes. Bye-bye, mm. <laughs> Bruno. Bye, Susie. Goodbye, baby. Get out of my kitchen. Alright, let's go to the crime scene. Hello! Oh! Oi! Hello again, Inspector Gregson. What are you doing here? Uh, well, we were hoping to have another look around, actually. The lawyer representing the defendant has a right to examine the scene, as I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, I'll know the score. Oh, 
Uh, yes, one other thing. The soap on the ledge outside the window, did you find it? With the tea in it? Yeah, we found it all right. And there was a small amount of tea in it, as you said. I knew it. It's with the identification section at the yard now. They're looking into it. Oh, Yam is home now. The, res the results should be available later today. Hello! <laughs> yes, hello. We've gone past uh, greetings. Mm. Pretty impressive performance in court this morning. Sorry? Nothing. Forget it. Just make sure you don't disturb anything here. Tobias Greg's in Sundere moments. Hey, man. Get the fuck out of here, you freak. <laughs> Get out of here, you freak! <laughs> Nothing particular of note. So it turns out that Mr. Shamspear wasn't eating the soap at all. Case closed. That's right. The mystery of why he had it on a plate whilst a fork in his hand is solved. Yes, to prize his latest ice coin out of its mold. And in the process, he accidentally broke the barbed soap in two. I can't imagine how you would use, like, while prying a little part of the soap, cracking the entire thing in half. If it's, it was cold enough. I, like, I can't imagine the force and the direction that would do that as opposed to just chipping off part of it. It doesn't really matter, but still. It certainly was hard to imagine, let alone deduce. All right, cups. Ah, the ill-fated teacups from which the two men drank on the ill-fated night. Yes! During the heated literary debate, of course. Who's stronger, Romeo or Juliet? Sounds like it was quite a discussion. Now I think of it, I'm sure that the two lovers in the play ended their lives with poison. With what? Mm, poison. That's fiction, Miss Suzato. Let's hope it stays that way. Poisson no. isn't real. Just a minor then what are those little men in the Thames? What are they? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, me. It's a me. fish joke, please. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that fi uh, if you ran out of change, you wouldn't even have any light, let alone heat. For the needy, London's, London's winters can be very harsh. That's true, but if you think about it, even the wealthy would find themselves freezing if they ran out of small change. London's winters can be very harsh for the forgetful, too, then. Frankly, I'm starting to wonder if suzato san and I are going to make it to spring. No, that's true. We don't even have a meter at Baker Street, let alone a gas stove. Yikes. Look how dark the stain on the floor is underneath the meter there. Yeah, see, I was thinking this is where we would test for poison, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, from all the water dripping out after the coins have melted, you've established that in court this morning. It's a very large and obvious stain, isn't it? Hold on, I'm getting messages that are distracting me. Mr. Shamsby is something something. It was an ingenious idea, I'll give him that. Yes, yeah, something something. What's that little red thing on the uh, gas lamp up there? Is that just the switch? I think it's Probably just a little switch. Yeah. <clears throat> the sun never shines in this room, thanks to that depressing bricked up window. Yet, with enough determination, you can always remove the bricks to set some soap outside, can't you? Sounds like a very wise life lesson, Miss Suzato. Only if you plan to follow a life of crime, Mr. Narahodo. Yes. Also, oh, hi, Yam. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, well, Yam's here now, so... <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, what are you up to over there? Oh, hello. What a question <laughs> indeed. Was it not your good self who asked me to attend the scene? Oi! What are you doing here, Sholmes? What are you doing? Sorry. What are you up to over there? What are you doing here? Dear me, one's a great detective. One is always under scrutiny, it seems. Is now the time, Mr. Shomes? Oh, are you about to show- I thought she was like, it's really the time! Are you about to show us your forensic talents in action, as you promised? No! With great- uh, Sorry. With the greatest of pleasure, my dear madam. Um, what's all this then? <laughs> <laughs> Lasers! That's my line. All this is precisely what you requested, Mr. Narahodo. Herlock Sholmes is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. He vanished. Really safe. Oh. No, you, um, your, your mic just. 
it what? just went, her luck, Sholmes is... <laughs> oh? I think you're back now. I think it was just a little Yeah, you're hiccup. good now, though. Seems oh. so. Okay. Moments ago, I took a sample from the teacup that was used by the victim. A sample? Don't be so shy. From Ooh, Mr. Shamspears' you... cup. That gun did not lock to his hand very well. It had to, like, move in slowly back into his hand when he moved. Uh -oh. I, I wasn't looking. Each individual leaves microscopic secretions on everything he or she touches. A sample of those secretions is all I need to produce this, a refined indicator solution. By liberally spraying the room with this chemical, everything the victim touched is instantly revealed with the aid of these goggles. Yeah, try them on. Oh, God. Nah. Now. Oh, that's you. I there. hate using no. night eye. Spray the chemical indicator about, and all will be revealed. Spray? Uh, how do I do that exactly? A little press of the space bar. <laughs> what? <laughs> the space bar. Right oh. here pushes your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> what is that stuff? It's like fog. A suspension of the chemical indicator in a pressurized gas. It's the most efficient way to cover a large area. That was another invention I discovered incidentally whilst I was developing this idea. As you do. Go ahead, try it, my dear fellow. We may learn something interesting about the victim's movements on the night in question. Well, there's nothing to lose, I suppose. Let's explore. Yay. Little man. No, my crackers keep falling apart. No. Okay. Oh boy, the, the box. What's over by that box? I think. How about. I, I'm kind of just oh, going over. Is that a cat paw? On the ground? No. no. Maybe, oh, was it maybe, wrestling? Maybe the board above the crate? On the wall? That's a painting. No, um. Oh? Oh, he'd been peeping. Oh man! <laughs> I know what these are. <laughs> Look, there are dozens of prints here. Uh huh. So there are a great many indeed. So much so that it's hard to make out any one individual print. In fact, <laughs> enough. I mean, Juliet was stabbed. Shut the fuck up. <sighs> Send a chill down my spine. <laughs> Chat, so Seki get it. <laughs> get his ass. No. <laughs> He's always shaking. <laughs> it's perhaps he was leaning against the wall while he admired this picture. Sure. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride. Yeah. And without wishing to state the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> generally admire a picture from such close quarters, I feel. Oh, very true, Mr. Zotto. It's a bit of a mystery, then. Hmm. Hmm. Moving on. Yeah, I meant the board that's uh, nailed across the wall there. Yeah, Just above below the, the picture. Below the picture. Are oh. You in oh. So, okay. in, my, in my head, I was picturing, like, a chalkboard. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah I, I was thinking that as well. Okay. Um, I I must still be missing something. All right, let's just just pap and spray. God. <laughs> Look again, so many hit guys. All right. Um. Maybe on the ground under the king costume. Thought we spritzed there, but worth trying again. Maybe that is everything. Yep. It looks it like everything. It doesn't look like there's like an option to back out though, so I must be missing some kind of prompt. Press, press bottom, B. Bottom right says someone. I did. Oh, um, here. Oh. oh, okay. Oh shit, they were break oh. dancing. Oh, look at all this here. Oh, the, the board comes up, I guess. Oh yes, interesting. A multitude of the victim's handprints. Why are there so many of them on the floor in this one spot? Oh, perhaps he had a bad fall just here? There's nothing obvious that he would have tripped over, though, is there, except for this plank? Hmm, I wonder. 
Personally, I often stumble when there's that's nothing because obvious. because I'm high on my ass. I think that's something only a great detective would do, Mr. Sholmes. Well, this is quite a puzzle. Handprints all over the floor. Oh, man. I was about to say, oh, we can't call them handprints. We should call them... Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe we should. <laughs> Since we call bloodstains bloodies and fingerprints fingies, mm. maybe we should just abstain from the joke. <laughs> mm. Well, we sprayed Mr. Sholmes' amazing skin print indicator all over this room, didn't we? Skinnies! <laughs> Skinnies! We did, but there are two places in particular that are of the, the weird. Uh -huh. Handprints on the floor over there, and on the wall by the picture, you mean. Yes, and I think the floor warrants closer investigate. Look at it. I'm losing it. Okay. I think oh, hi, Susato. Oh. <laughs> what is it, Miss Susato? There's a body. A rat! A body under the floorboards, right here. A telltale heart. Look here, Mr. Naruto. One of the floorboards has popped out. One of the. You mean it's a secret hiding place? Excellent work, Miss Susato. So. What do we have in here? Oi, what are you lot doing? What, you Your just been... Inspector Gregson. Stand aside right there. It's my job to investigate that. No need, Inspector. You continue to <laughs> dig into your portion of chips whilst we dig around under the floor here. Your fancy talk's putting me off my food anyway, Sholmes. Gross. A new bit of evidence is exactly what I need. Wow, a secret hiding place under the floor. What a find! I'm putting my food away for me to go. No, I know, but I never expected one of these wooden floorboards to move either. It's got me wondering about the wall over there too, aren't you curious? Oh, I'll investigate it once. Aw, she's so little. There's nothing behind the picture, sadly. Only the wall. Why would there be so many handprints? Hmm. How disappointing. But then, how do you explain the handprints? Oh, right. I really can't think of why someone would have been touching the wall over and over in one place like that. Ryanosuke just here, like, pulling his collar. There you are. A print for you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. His invention can make prints, too. Now then, I wonder if Inspector Gregson has found anything under the floor here. I'm desperate to know! So am I! How do you lift this thing? <laughs> what is this thing? Is it, is, it, is it a push? Inspector? I'd love to know if there's anything hidden underneath that floorboard there. Allow me to ask Gregson now. After all, we are well acquainted. <laughs> Inspector Gregson! Really, it's been too long. The forest is whispering. What is it, Sholmes? I thought perhaps you might show me what you found there, seeing as we're such good friends. <laughs> we're not friends. Oh. No, I suppose not. Well, I buggered it up there! <laughs> <laughs> A dismal failure! Yes, I heard. I'd kill to know what was under that floorboard. I'd poison someone! Mm. Alright then, fair is fair. Just someone in chat. Just got a just got a uh, job at Bath and Body Works. Let me know if y'all need candles. I actually love Bath and Body Works candles. Send me some. <laughs> What? What? You did discover the hiding place after all. I suppose I should at least fill you in. Really, Inspector? Thank you. Do it quickly, my dear fellow! If there's one thing I know about this man, it's that he blows with the wind, as fickle as the weather. Oi, stop making me out to be some kind of nut. Nut. Nut, oh no. <laughs> there were three items under the floor there. A newspaper clipping, a photographic print, and a tin box. Now, 
What do you want to know? Uh, All three, preferably, you get one. <laughs> Looks like this was cut out from the uh, paper about three days ago. It's about a convict who got sick and died while he was serving time in Manchester. Since it probably will matter, it was three months. Ah, three how, months. How terrible. It made the headlines down here in London as well. The bloke had been sentenced to death, you see, but nature got him first. Doubt it. Oh my goodness, he committed a capital offence? Mm -hmm. Oh damn, who? Man by the name of Selden, nasty oh. piece of work, into burglaries and murder. Selden... Is he selling them bad things? Selden Bayern, they call him. <laughs> <laughs> they say the hoard he knocked off was worth about a thousand pounds. A hoard? A treasure, you mean? Jewelry and the like. But he'd hidden it somewhere, and no one knows where, but it's in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> the papers loved it, of course. A thousand pounds lost en route to hell, or some such with headline. Does it not strike you, though? Why such an article would be so carefully ensconced under the floor? <laughs> ensconced. Oh my god. Ensconced? Are, are Sham's gems part of the treasure? I think he's probably just looking for them because he's fucking poor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I suppose now that you mention it, it does seem a bit odd. Perhaps I'll go over the paper we've got on Selden back of the yard and see if I can turn anything up. So, this is the photograph I found. Looks reasonably recent to me. Oh, did he have a oh, son? That's, that's, um, that's Olive Green's brother, isn't it? Yep. Well, what we're assuming to be him, but I don't think he's actually your brother. No, but the guy in the picture. No, we, the thing, yeah, the, the guess we made earlier is that he is the brother and then Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes, it would appear to have been taken in the street in front of the house there. And the gentleman on the left is Mr. Garadib, the landlord, of course. But who's the young man on the right? Mr. Garadib, so come on, man. Perhaps you could take that print if you like. Why? Really? Are you sure? We can presume, therefore, that the yard already knows. The Did identity you... of the young fellow, that is. Oh, is that true? <sighs> hmm. Well, it's too bad if we do. Unfortunately for you lot, leaking information isn't one of my pastimes. I'm not a dick gumshoe. Manchester Strangways Prison announced the death of convicted murder and burglar, oh, just mononym, Selden, hmm. by natural causes in the early hours this morning. He'd been suffering with a fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. Doubt it. Doubt. <laughs> So am I crazy? Or are you guys just making up that she had a brother? No, we saw. No. The, what do you? How, we saw a picture. Olive has a brother. Oh, okay. And and she even mentioned that. And she that's had him. A brother. Okay. That, that's gotta be him. All right. My dear inspector, if I might be so bold as to point something out. Pastimes are for one's leisure, but this is for work. We are not friends. All the more reason I'm not telling you. What? <laughs> <Just> what? <laughs> a dismal failure! <laughs> yes, I heard. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to look at that. I wonder why a photograph like this was hidden under the floor. Let's look at it with our eyes. Who could it possibly be? It's me, Giant Mouth. <laughs> Here comes the Crimson Chin. Yeah, he's even got the painting shit. I mean, Mr. Shamspear himself isn't in it. What if after Prince are still rare treasures in the East End? I imagine Mr. Godip was rather delighted to have been immortalized. He probably made a proud present of it. Blink. Oh, this box is filled with organs. <laughs> <laughs> now this tin box looks interesting, doesn't it? Might I suggest, Inspector, that you open it? If you were to find something inside that reveals the truth behind this case, I wouldn't be in the slightest surprised. Yeah, funnily enough, I've already taken a look. It's completely empty. What? 
What? Sham spell! Give us a clue, man! <laughs> oh, sorry. Something! You didn't even have the chance to utter a word, Mr. Naruhodo. But anyway, at least we found out what's inside the box. Yes, thin air. It's empty. Rather like how I feel inside. Oh, oh man. What? Is there, is there nothing more to this? I mean, he's telling us it's empty, but we didn't actually see it. Uh, I wonder. Hi. The murderer finally shows themselves. Oh, diabolical. Oh, diabolical oh. creature. Oh, look, it's that lovely little kitty cat. Oh, what was its name? It's Mr. Notsumez, isn't it? I don't think we ever asked him, actually. Why don't we call it, um, Wagahai? You know, like Mr. Notsume refers to himself in Japanese. Wonder how he got in there, clever cat. Oh, wonderful. Well then, Wagahai, here's something delicious I brought you from the cat's meat man. Megan's meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do you have Whoa. that? You're just carrying that around in your pocket? Yes. Oh. It's Mr. Sholmes' brain. <laughs> mm, delicious prion. <gasps> oh, baby. <laughs> he couldn't be happier now. Look. I just hope we can bring some happiness to his owner, too. We're not gonna investigate how this cat got in here. Can we move the set, please, guys? It's pretty important. Oh, he's loafing! <laughs> oh. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> that, was no. a, that was a cheeky little meow, Wagahai. <laughs> you <laughs> pee! <laughs> You piece of shit! <laughs> you oh, but he's adorable! I could sit and watch him forever. I think he may not appreciate that after a while. And we have an investigation to get back to. Alright. Okay. Maybe you can click above the set? No. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Meow. Mm, meow! Uh, why is that light still on? That feels weird. The, uh, little candle? Yeah. I don't know. It's the only light in the room. Let's investigate this man. Poke, prod, kick. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just the wine glass and bottle. And both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? Hmm. What's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zeeks. Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste and that he should donate some of it to the needy. You can suggest it the next time we meet. <laughs> oh, I cannot speak to him. Hmm. I feel like there's probably still something we need to do in here. In right? Stop looking corner. at me. In the top corner there, where the wallpaper is ripped away in the middle, there's like a brick that's kind of discolored. There's there's nothing there. You can see when the cursor oh. changes to an interactable. Oh, okay. Hmm. Have you clicked on that box again? No, there's nothing there. Hmm. Wait. Mm. Do Thank you have access to another of um, Sholmes's little devices? Maybe. No. I okay. think that, that was a that was a cutscene. Okay. I'm gonna see what happens if we just move. Mr. Kadab appears to be out. If you click on the cat 50 more times, it'll tell you who the killer is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. Or right. we could look around. I actually did want to talk to him. I wanted to present the photo to him. Can you explain this photo? There's so many hands here. Oh, buddy. Oh, Mr. Natsume is back. So he is. 
Mr. Natsume, hello. <laughs> I am a cat. Sorry. I don't know who Mr. Natsume is or Herlock Sholmes. I don't know about courts or trials or old baileys. I am a cat. That's what I am, just a cat. Mr. Narod, he's trying to escape from reality. Trying to? He already has, completely. Inception theme starts playing. So, um, what is your name then? Me! As yet, I have no name. Mr. Narodo, he hasn't fully thought out his new identity yet. Maybe it's not too late to bring him back to reality. Do you think you could open your eyes for us, Mr. Natsume? I am not a cat. It worked! He's back in the real world! What's going to become of me? No! Don't answer that! It's obvious! My accursed soul is never going to accursed curse, curse, curse! Mr. Natsume, no! This morning's proceedings in court prove that there's hope! <laughs> yes, yes. Lokum stood at Mr. Narahodo Esquire was brilliant, but, but the Reaper is omnipresent in court! In my lodgings, here, there, everywhere! He was even in my cat reality! <laughs> What's he looking straight it was at just me for? A regular cat, but he had a man's face! And walked around with a chalice! I think perhaps there are some things we should discuss. Oh, yes. Yes, we must. Did you two fuck? <laughs> in my whole life. I, have I ever been so, so moved as I was today? No! Of course, if I cast my mind back, there were perhaps one or two other occasions that moved me more. But if I just block those out, then today, being in that courtroom was, was, it was the most moving experience of my life! Look, I'm student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire! You're too kind. Scotland Yard found the remaining tea, just as we deduced, and are analyzing it as we speak. There's nothing wrong with that tea! They won't find a drop of poison in it! That's a solemn sworn Soseki certainty! Tell me, did you both drink the tea at the same time that night? <laughs> oh yes, most definitely! Remember, drink tea while it's hot! We both poured it down our throats like it was a hot bath for our bellies! And at the time, you were both completely fine. As shown by the fact that he and Mr. Shamspear then engaged in the Romeo and Juliet match. I suppose the focus of tomorrow's proceedings will be how the poisson was taken by the victim then. That rotten Shamspear! What have I ever done to him? You don't recall him taking issue with you over anything you've done recently? I've been holed up in my room, immersed in books. I don't recall anything, anything at all! Right. But what I don't understand is why he didn't let me know sooner. And let you know what, Mr. Natsume? About the soap, of course! What else? Let me, let me in on that! <laughs> oh dear. Are you struggling with such mega stipend? Of course I am! If I had money, I wouldn't have chosen to live an accursed existence in such accursed lodgings! Oh, yes, you said it's because the place is cursed that it's so cheap, didn't you? Exactly! Especially the room that I rent! The spirit of that capital offender- oh, okay. Capital offender who lived there still haunts the place, and it's trying to kill me! Capital offender? I might ask, locum student Mr. Narahoto Esquire, that next time you visit me, you bring scores of super soft soaps! <laughs> I am stinky! Okay. I'm going to stop talking to you now. Uh, yeah, do we have the, um, profile for that guy? You can't present profiles. Oh. But we can present the newspaper. What's this? Oh, sorry. It's a newspaper cutting that we found in Mr. Shamspear's room. Ah, so he knew, did he? Sorry. 
about this man, Selden, a convicted killer, and the evil spirit behind the curse that afflicts my lodgings! Oh my god, is that guy living in the walls? He faked his death and has been living in the walls of the house? Yeah. He's already taken one young man's life, and now he's trying to take the life of another. A miserable, mustached, much maligned Japanese man! Mr. Natsume, if you know something, please, you must tell us. Tell us everything you can about this evil spirit. Hmm. The truth is, I didn't know the details myself until very recently. That Selden man was arrested about a year ago now. Uh, and at the time, he was hiding out in lodgings at Mr. Garadub's house. What? He lived where you do now? That's right, yes, exactly where I live now. In my very room. Oh my, your room was previously occupied by a criminal found guilty of capital offense? But before his sentence could be carried out, he died in prison. That was three months ago now, and that's when it started. The curse! What really is this curse you keep mentioning, Mr. Natsume? Mm, it's already caused one death. A few months after the criminal passed away in prison, a man died in the room. The man who rented it after Selden, in fact. The poor lodger, he, he was found dead in mysterious circumstances. The room was locked from the inside. Locked from the inside? Exactly like the case we're dealing with now. So that's the convict's curse, is it? <laughs> yes, well, that was the start of it. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Pre B E. Do you have any idea how the lodger before you passed away, Mr. Natsume? The official cause of death was asphyxia. When they discovered Ooh. the body, the room was full of gas. Gas? I'd only found that out after I'd signed the lease. When Mr. Gerardip came to me later, I couldn't stop myself trembling. In fact, if I'd known beforehand, I pro I'd probably have been too scared to take the room. Landlord's lease, luckily legal! Hmm. Lucky for Mr. Gerardip, maybe, but not so lucky for poor Mr. Natsume. And you believe this, and now you believe this curse is affecting you. It is! It is! At first, I just felt as though I was being watched all the time. And then you talked about having nightmares, didn't you? The dead are trying to take me with them. They come for me and try to suffocate me. Just when I'm struggling to breathe, I wake up. And the room is as cold as ice. But why is your room so cold? Is he literally sneaking in and the cold air is getting in while he's trying to fucking suffocate Soseki or some shit? I think the gas is going off and not heating the room, which is what's choking oh. him. Mm, okay. um, London winters are too cold to bear without any heating on overnight. But for some reason, even though I light the stove before I climb into bed at night, the pilot light always goes out and the room fills with gas. But, but that's terrible. That's exactly the same situation as what led to the previous occupant's death. And then there's what happened to Mr. Shamspear last night when he was mysteriously poisoned. There's certainly more to that incident that can be explained by a curse, though. Whatever can be the cause of all this strange happening and happenings in Mr. Garrett's something room. Okay, uh, cool. I would like to show you. Do you have anything to say about this? <laughs> oh, I'm not on the present menu apparently. My bad. My B. <laughs> Uh, no, he doesn't know anything about it. How about, do you recognize the, the victim? No. no. Okay. And we can't talk to him about his cat yet, so... I think it's time to go to the hospital and probably show this picture to Olive. Mm. Okay. Dun, dun. Oh, she's gone. What do you suppose is happening? It sounds like some sort of disturbance. Yes, I hear angry voices. Oh, oh no! Lord. Be not angry, oh ample lady. Verily, thou art mistaken. Mistaken, my foot. You were looking. You were looking at my painting. 
The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Twas foul indeed the poisson that moustached villain gave with me. Forgive me, my lady. I wish that you died from that poisson. God a mercy, ample lady, but thou seest I have vigour still. Behold my <laughs> sham spear dance! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this looks rather ominous, doesn't it? Ah. Oh. Ah. ah, lo, tis the lawyer from that land whence rises the sun. How now? Um, what are you doing here, Mr. Shamspear? Mary, I do believe I am returned unto another ward. He was looking, that's what he was doing, looking at my terrible work. Do you think she, her, her painting has a clue to the treasure or like, he, cause mm. her brother was clearly a painter. So maybe he like started painting some treasure map or some shit. And this guy's interested. Eastern fellow, so dark he clad. I've never seen he clad as a word. It's, it's old, uh, it's old style, it's Shakespearean. Mm. Get ready for wordle. Faith, oh my god, man, what a cruel word. <laughs> Faith, thy work in this court this morning was wonderful. I do applaud thee. Oh, well, thank you. But that doesn't mean things will go so wonderfully for you tomorrow, does it? Oh my god. Anon! Anon Exunt! The name of the protagonist of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness! <laughs> Mr. Shamspear might technically be the victim in this case, but there's definitely a lot more to it than that. It's very hard to pin that man down. No, it's not! <laughs> Have you seen my painting? Shut the fuck up! Oh my god! I'm so sorry. I'm such an awful person. Ah, Miss Green. Is everything alright? Oh, yes. I mean... Don't worry about me. <laughs> Someone in chat, if there is treasure, can we pronounce it as Fred would, please? Treasure. Oh, certainly. Treasure. <laughs> she literally has a key around her neck. They're about to discharge me, so I must get ready to leave now. Oh, I see. Uh, we're delighted that you'll soon be well enough to go home, Miss Green. Oh dear, you're too kind. I, I don't deserve it. All right, then fuck off. I don't want to talk <laughs> to you. <laughs> Every time I get out of bed, I have to get my little hang glider so I land safely. <laughs> so, are you feeling more like yourself today, Miss Green? Yes, I feel awful. I am. Um, thank you. I mean, people do recover from ordeals like this, don't they? Even people like me. Well, yes, it really was an ordeal, wasn't it? As far as I was concerned, I was just walking along and in the snow one evening, minding my own business. And then, completely out of the blue, I was struck in the back by a knife and collapsed unconscious for days. Of course, when I finally woke up again yesterday, the whole business had been cleared up already. What a terrible week it's been for you. Oh no, I'm sure I'm very lucky really. I'll look back on this fondly. <laughs> really? Anyway, I must be getting my things together now, so I'm ready to be discharged. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry to take up your time when you're obviously busy. Okay, I don't think I can actually present anything Why did you to put her. me? Why did you put me back on the bed? You know how there hard you it is go. for me to get you the... sit rat, here. help me! <laughs> no! No, rat, oh. help me! And this looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. Rat. Rat. Bag. Medicine. There are lots of bottles in that cabinet, aren't there? Do you think it's safe to keep them like that? Or locked up, the poor things? <laughs> <laughs> if you were a patient here, I feel sure you'd take some medicine by mistake when you were half asleep. That is a worry. But at least the cabinet has a lock, even if it's only a flimsy-looking one. Oh, I've no doubt you'd manage to unlock that somehow while you were half asleep as well. There are limits even to what I can do when I'm half asleep, you know, Miss Susato. Here's the same dialogue. There are all sorts of medicines in this cabinet. Look, I'm not sure if it's safe to... Really? Guys. 
should probably probably put those on the same thing. I'm sorry, that's my fault. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, this looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Round. Do, do not feed. Oh. What is what? this place? A zoo? You know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign in our local park. For the pigeons, yes. This is a person. Poor woman, I hope she hasn't read this. I can't read. I was. I can only draw. I used to be a pigeon, but then the witch cursed me to be human. I wish the witch cursed me to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> or have a hat. A like my pigeon brother. <laughs> he is in the future. He's a time traveler. He's terribly talented, unlike me. Unlike me. What about that photo on the desk? Can you all, like, inspect it again? I don't... I, I guess, yeah. That's the picture of the brother. Oh, okay, alright. Yeah, see? Oh, wait, can you can you present things to me? I can't, no. Oh. Oh, Be I'm sorry for being the worst ever. Oh, I mean... shit, I didn't mean to click on her. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh. Oh, hoobity bloobity goobity boo. I, I actually am a, an onion and I was pulled out of the oh. ground. Just a little tuft of hair. That's how I get yanked out. Sorry, I thought that would be his hospital room. I was wrong. Um, Okay. Maybe let's look on the outside and look at if the thing has been removed. Yep, okay. She just leans out the window. It's terribly cold outside. I'm terribly sorry. That's All right, Miss Olive. <gasps> okay. All right, let's look around. Oh, Christopher Robin. The Garrett of Household and Mr. Notsume's lodgings are in a prominent position there on the corner. Sometimes when I look at the building, I can't help but feel that it's, it's a bit of a slant. It does rather look as though it would collapse even in the smallest earthquake, doesn't it? Luckily, we're in England. <laughs> and isn't it supposed to be haunted as well? I think I might have a hunch as to why Suseki-san has such a hunched back. I think I might have a hunch. <laughs> Snowman. Yeah, there he is, the murderer. Why, is, <laughs> why has somebody built this snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? Hmm, that's not a pedestal, Mr. Naruhodo. It's part of the snowman's body. Really? But it already has a perfectly good body. Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made with two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. And now we're looking at him as if he's strange. Poor man. I know how he feels. If anything, it's Japanese and British two-ball snowmen that are the strange ones, isn't it? After all, real people do have three sections. Head, torso, and legs. Those are Not the three sections. <laughs> do you ever think perhaps you think about things too much? Leave me alone, you freak. What? <laughs> um, on the previous screen, it looks like you could click at the end of the lane. Yeah. yeah. London's blanketed in fog again today, and the sky is covered in cloud. But if you look carefully in the distance, you can just make out the Crystal Tower being built. Ah, the Crystal Tower, yes. The centerpiece of the great exhibition that's to open six months' time. Everyone's something. Fuck. Everyone's talking about the great exhibition of London at the moment, it seems. Well, it's to be the largest event of its kind anywhere in the world, with technology and scientists from all over. Man, I really hope that that's what the last case takes yeah. place during. Love me a World Fair aesthetic. I can't wait for it myself. Do you think visiting students from the Far East like us will be granted entry? Just buy a ticket. The last great exhibition that was held in London had more than six million visitors, it seems. Damn. And this time, the British are determined to make it an even bigger success to outdo the Paris Exposition. I see. That's an incredible number of people. And with so many people expected to attend, we should easily be able to slip in unnoticed. There's always the honest approach of buying tickets at the main entrance, Mr. Naruhoto. I Can hate... you click on that smokestack at the top? No. The, uh, the trail? It's no? it's not a latent game. There will not be oh, hints. No, I know, but they might have comments about it. Ugly! Ugly stinko! Smoke. Oh, that window's bricked up too. Over on the uh, far right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, someone in chat mentioned that um, when you go to different locations, if you highlight them, uh, 
Suzato will give cl like hints as right. to where it might be at the next location. I don't believe we visited this place for some time. Sure, let's try it. Oh, maybe he's there now. Mm. Yes. Moon! Ah, oh, you're here now, Mr. Garadib. Yam, did you want to be Mr. Garadib so you had someone? <clears throat> right, ballet business it is for me, you know, getting out and about. Were you at the Old Bailey by any chance? No. <laughs> Naturally. Fate of my lodgings hanging in the balance and all that. Not a trial to miss. The fate of what's already been dubbed your haunted lodgings, yes. Of course the place has caused quite a stir around the capital on more than one occasion already. As the old haunted lodgings or some such. Ah, well, at least he knows. Makes you wonder what the blazes is going on, don't, don't you know? Hi. Yes, I'm sure. What the fuck? In fact, thinking back to Mr. Natsume's of the trial, just to I'm sauced. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the old Bailey then as well, weren't you? Testifying with your wife about what happened. You're not sauced, you're Suzato. Maybe. You're right. <laughs> Maybe Will should be Garadib since fucking. Yeah, I what? didn't realize Sholmes was gonna just magically appear. Neither did I Sholmes. Not notice. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> Soft up with the prison on the way home. In fact, beastly place. I see. I rise. <laughs> I made that joke last time. So, what brings you to my haunted abode today? I'm sure I can talk to him, but I'm more curious about this, to be honest. Mr. Garrett, could I ask you to look at this photograph? Is that your oh, son that? who's with you there? No, no, not at all. Uh, he was a lodger here once. Duncan Ross was his name. Duncan oh Ross. <laughs> a street photographer happened to be passing, so I asked him to take a shot, just for kicks, really. Was he by any chance a lodger before Mr. Natsume? Yes, that's right. Ah, the young gentleman who died in the room in mysterious circumstances. Just what Mr. Mustache, just what Mr. Mustache was waiting for, one might say. Yes, young Duncan lived in the room at the top of the first flight of stairs before the ch uh, Japanese chat. Would you mind telling us a little more about him? Yes. You know what's great is I bet we're going to, like, do one of these first ones, and they're going to be like, Sholmes, when did you get here? But I'm doing it out of order, so. mm -hmm. Yes, Duncan Ross, young chap, was attending art school. Had to work to pay for it, mind. Moved into the middle floor room about a year ago after that criminal Selden was arrested. Young students are always on the hunt for rooms with a history behind them. A history of cheap rent, maybe, yes. <laughs> yes, well, anyway, it was one morning about a month ago. Hadn't quite worked out the old trick of watching the gas lamps to see what my lodgers are up to at that time. So, sadly, I was rather tardy to discover what had happened. Smell of gas that alerted me, it was. Ah, oh, yes, synonymous with the smell of death. Called the police straight away, of course, and the officer kicked the door down, tore off its hinges. Dude, have a master key. Why do you keep needing to do this? Why do you not have a key to these rooms? But once we got inside, we all barely collapsed. Because of the gas? Yes, room was full of it, nowhere at all. Stove must have gone out while the poor chap was sleeping in his bed. So Mr. Roth sussed, 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 sussed. Of course, police gave me a sound ticking off because the gas pipes were o so old and all that. Can't tell you how much. It set me back to have the lot replaced all over the house. All right, well, at least he replaced them. But even after then, that- Then, if they're replaced, then why does Soseki's room still get filled with gas? I like to die! But even after <laughs> you had all that work done, Mr. Natsume says the same thing, that the stove goes out at night whilst he's asleep in bed. Well, that's the Bally curse, the convict's curse. I've done my duty as a landlord now. This is Landlords. Most, landlords. This is the most realistic dialogue in Ace Attorney. <laughs> Someone's feeling defensive. It's me, I'm a defense attorney. <laughs> Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor chap of questionable character, eh? 
Yes, the house does seem to have become something of a magnet for rum fellows of late. And thanks to that belly curse. The convict's curse, you mean. Ah, heard the stories, have you? From our last Rot conversation. <laughs> Rotten scoundrel was arrested here. Then the next chap in the room goes and keels over. Then there was that woman who dropped dead just outside the street, not to mention the actor yesterday. Am I next? Uh, well, can't help but get the collie wobbles, can you? I haven't heard collie wobbles in fucking years. When you say the woman who dropped dead outside on the street, do you mean Miss Green? Because Miss Green, who was stabbed by the knife, and Mr. Shamspear, who was poisoned last night, are both very much alive still. What? Yes, well, so is that blessed convict's curse, it seems. I am here! Personally, I should be quite content with such lodgings. I am like a nematode. I only need sunlight and water. I don't need A even... bath, a toilet, a fireplace, a fascinating history. Why, it sounds like a lap of luxury. And I don't even need a toilet due to my new invention. <laughs> it's the other. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Well, there's no bath or toilet included, and no oh. fireplace either. But you do look out for your tenants, don't you? By watching the rise and fall of the flames in your gas lamps up here? Yes, never hurts to keep an eye on things. In case there are any mishaps or such like. I think you have had your mishap already, sir. <laughs> it's not very helpful, Hi, Mr. Sholmes. Heaven forgive me. The words just came to my lips. Okay. When did you get here, by the way? Oh, don't worry. Well, I noticed the window was closed, so I jumped through. <laughs> so, some fizzy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor of it. This feels familiar. Wait. I Yeah, you're right. Oh, no, okay. It's it's oh, different. Okay. That's right. Mr. Not's amazing. No way fishy. That's weird. It did start with the same line of dialogue. Hmm. He is undeniably peculiar, however. Is it oh, right? Stop it. Is it right that he took the vacancy immediately after the previous tenant passed away? Yes, that's right. I asked the estate agent to find someone and he popped up the very same day. That's unbelievably lucky for you. Never come across a chap so keen for a place with a background, as it were. I don't think it was the room's background he was keen on so much as the cheap rent, actually. So, how long has Mr. Shamspear been lodging under your roof? That failed actor chap? Hmm, let me see. Oh, of course! Two days. Yes, it's been three months now. Quite sure of it. Only three months. He's quite new here too, then. And what do you... Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you owe your certainty in that regard, Mr. Garadev, if I might ask? Well, it was that Selden scoundrel, as it happens. Selden, the... Conflict. The conflict, you mean? <laughs> Do Selden and Shamspear have some kind of connection, then? So they're always looking at that photograph in some strange formation. Couldn't barely figure out why. That convict chap, Selden, passed away in the clink three months ago now, you see. Some malady of some sort. Yes, we've seen the report from the newspaper at the time. Well, it was only three days later that the tragedian? Trage tragedian. Tra the tragedian showed his face. The actor fellow. Really? Yes, I remember it quite distinctly. Mm. Oh, tis oh. small. <laughs> tis small, this world we have it. Privy landlord, hear my request. I, the humble sham spear, do desire to take thy room on the middle floor, offered erewhile for rent. Hmm, terribly sorry and whatnot, but that won't be possible. Already have a lodger on the middle floor. Ground floor room's vacant, though. Nothing can be made out of nothing. Uh, let me repeat mine will unto thee. Those curls must be muffling your e muffling your ears. The room on the middle floor is taken. It's ground floor nothing. So he's definitely looking for the treasure buried in these yeah. walls. The treasure. Very well. We have an accord. Oh. Glad to hear it. Is oh, that why he's trying to get so sucky in jail so he can move up to that room? Yeah. Yeah. Hello! Okay. A Shamspear dance to celebrate! Well, um, I think 
so I think the timeline is the dead criminal was in the middle room. He wants that room, mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. killed the criminal to get it. And then I think probably what happened is he realized later that he actually needed the bottom room. Mm. Uh, Lou, a Shemsmere dance to celebrate! No, no, he moved He moved into the apartment the day the criminal died. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and then the the uh, the painter brother was already there. Right, the, so okay. So he I dies, and then the day the painter died, so Seki already showed up to take the room, so he couldn't move in there. Gotcha, okay. I forgot about the painter brother in the equation. Oops, scrolling moves the text forward. Didn't know that. From what I heard in court today, sounds like the chap was thieving gas. And he was three months in uh, arrears? Yeah. Arrears, yeah. Oh, in arrears with the rent, too. Yes, the fellow was a bally player, all right. Jesus, you let him stay here for three months with no rent the entire time? Well, he's white. <laughs> Everyone's white. <laughs> You're in England. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for your candor, Mr. Gerdy. We are most grateful. By way of appreciation, allow me to say one or two words. Artichoke. Give me, give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal lodgings in me. Longings. Longings. What's happened to you? Shakespeare, my dear fellow. One of his most famous lines. I wish to divulge my own learning of this subject, for I have a turn for literature too, you know. Perhaps you could turn your attention to more apt lines, then? Ah, that reminds me, actually. Yes? Uh, about young Duncan, the night before the poor chap perished. He'd been writing a letter, a letter of affection to a young lady. A love letter, you mean? No. Yes, where did I put it now? <laughs> I just have it! Ah, here it is. Left it ah, on my desk. Ah, yes, of course. If you'll excuse me, let me see now. What does it say? If you'll excuse me, I'm famished. Mm, um, mm. <laughs> to my most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Um, do you think that we should be reading such a personal piece of correspondence? My dear Miss Susato, that is precisely why I prefaced my reading with If you'll excuse me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, people are mentioning this is the letter that made Mrs. Garadab yeah. think that he was cheating from the last game. That's clever. Oh. That's cool. I will not excuse you, Mr. Shones, no! Sadly, he didn't address it, though. So, I've no means of delivering the thing. Rather sad, really. Oh, people are saying it's not that letter. Let us no, dream. It's, yeah, no, that letter was addressed to a, a man, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. It was like the bookmark or whatever. But really, the identity of Mr. Ross's sweetheart has no bearing on the case. I think we should leave well alone. Yes, I suppose you're right. Indeed, the intended recipient's address is missing. However, there is a name attributed to the man's most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Mr. Shones, please, I've already had to chastise you about this once. I don't listen. My undying love to you, my colorful darling, Olive Green. Uh, Olive Green? The the woman who, who could it be? Well, they look too similar. It's gross. I just assumed <laughs> since they have the same haircut and hair color. <laughs> I, I must have just totally misinterpreted information that was given earlier because I, I genuinely thought that she so did, said I that. Told so you did I. Guys. Yep, no, fair enough, Siv. You didn't even remember him, Siv. Do not high road us here. No, I remember that there was a character, but I was like, I was confused as to why you were referring to him as the brother. I was like, I don't remember there being a brother. Eh, thumbs down. <laughs> the victim of the last case Sekison was in court for, who regained consciousness only yesterday. Is it by chat? Yeah, we get it. Let's go talk to Olive. I'm still here. Yes. Hello. I live here. You, why would you ever want to talk to me? Of no, course. I just have to. Oh, I'm still on this bed. It's so high. Mr. Nutterhood, I've just finished speaking with the doctor. She's dead. It 
seems Miss Green is well enough to be discharged at last. This is good. Oh, no. <laughs> what is it? I'm lost. She's hedging. You Girl, drinking? Don't do it. Miss Green! I love drinking paint. Oh. Uh, what's that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. One, one moment. I'll be with you in a jiffy. Hmm. Oh, hello everyone. Um, what are you all doing here? The doctor has said I can be discharged, so I'm just getting my things together. Miss Green, what were you just doing? Oh, um, nothing, really. I was just about to take some medicine the doctor prescribed for me, that's all. I don't believe you. We were hoping to have another quick chat with you, if that's all right. I don't really have anything else to tell you. All right, she's definitely behaving strangely. Let's see if we can't coax something out of her. Oh! I am I wanted to present this like an hour ago, so... Miss Green, we were hoping to ask you about someone. Mr. Duncan Ross. You knew him, didn't you? I killed her. Whoa. Oh no! I'm so sorry! The bottle of extremely strangely coloured medicine fell down when she did! Oh, Miss Green, are you alright? This is a bottle of pure pink. The colour opposite of green. If I drink it, I disappear. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to startle you like that. No, no, it's alright. I just wasn't expecting it. But how do you know about Duncan? Mr. Ross had been writing a letter when he passed away. The landlord found it in his room. It, it was a very personal letter. To you. Yes, I did owe him money. <laughs> it, it was at the art school. That's where I met Duncan. A year ago now. They forced us all to cut our hair the exact same way. <laughs> He was working to fund his studies. He dreamt of becoming a professional artist one day. And the two of you became romantically involved? Yes, that's right. We were very much in love. We were engaged to be married, actually. That's why he decided to move into a cheaper room to save money for the wedding. Real you shouldn't spend a lot of money on your weddings, gang. Real, uh, real theme <clears throat> of extremely poor loving couples in these games. <laughs> And that's what led him to Mr. Garadab's. Yes, he told me he'd found the worst but cheapest room in the mm. entire East End. And then, one month ago, that's when it happened. I'm so terribly sorry, Miss Green. Well, it's all in the past now, I suppose. Oh, Miss Green, she looks desperately sad. I was just starting to think that that's her look. <laughs> I'm really no <laughs> scared. <laughs> But I don't understand these straight people, but now I see that she has every reason to feel like the universe is against her. Okay. Uh, let's also... Are these handprints familiar to you? Oh, yes. No. Leave me alone. All right, let's go look at your poison. No, oh, it's the not... letter. The paper from the letter. Yeah. It's for Sean. The bottle fell off before when Miss Green collapsed. That was quite an earthquake. Oh. Whatever's in the bottle. Honey, maybe, or treacle, or syrup, or all three mixed Let me try it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nardo, you've been having a lot of very mean thoughts during this exchange. I'm disappointed <laughs> in you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I didn't even... I... So I know that treacle is a, uh, is occasionally used as like a mixture with old timey British medicine. So I thought he was just like, I don't know, something. I didn't realize he was going, oh, I don't know, sugar, something a fat, fat girl would fat. eat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is the card that Miss Green was looking at so intently before, isn't it? Mr. Narahoto, we shouldn't be peeking at a young woman's private effects. Right. I should say peeking for gentlemen's effects only. You mustn't do that either. And maybe you, Miss Suzato, shouldn't be peeking into a young man's mind either. Hmm, stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> reading my mind. I'm tired of your shit, Suzato. Oh, I don't have the letter. No, you, you have this scrap of paper from the envelope. So what? See? That's attached to her letter. 
I, is it? What the rest you... of the envelope could not be located. Exit out and go back to look at the, the bench. See the envelope there? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the letter to Olive. No. Like, that we just got. No. Um, okay. Nope. You're you're way too ahead of this case. Oops. I'm sorry, you're a little too smart for this. It's wonderful news that you're going to be discharged, Miss Green. <clears throat> oh yes, I mean, thank you. Once people are better, the hospital staff don't want them lingering and wasting space. Not people like me, anyway. So I... I don't think I should keep anyone waiting. I probably shouldn't stand around and chat. Certainly doesn't seem to be in the mood to talk, that's for sure. No, I'm sad. Leave me alone. Oh, sorry. Um... I do hope you won't think I'm being rude, but... Would you mind leaving me in peace now? I have to leave the hospital soon. Oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean to hold you up. God, don't leave her alone, guys. Of course, we'll be on our way. Mr. Narahodo! Surely you were not about to leave? That's quite out of the question! What? Mr. Sholmes, I didn't realize you were here! But of course I was, my dear fellow! Watching intently from the shadows as always! Well, make your presence known next time! Mr. Sholmes, what is this about? I don't know. Something which occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Sato, is this. Why do detectives insist on such an ex post facto modus operandi? Why solve a case after it's happened, instead of preventing a case before it happens? That is what sets a great detective apart. You're what so you stupid. Mean? There is a case waiting to happen under our very noses, Mr. Narohodo. So let us avert disaster. Let us prevent this case from ever happening with nothing but careful observation. All right. All the clues you need are set before you. You need only look and you cannot fail to see. Can you just tell us it's poison? You can do it, Mr. Narahodo. I know you can. Please leave me alone. <laughs> I just want to die. Just like Oh, the, own... the rat is dead. The rat is dead. <sighs> no. The rat. No! Mr. Duncan Ross. Who would have ever thought he was engaged to be married to Miss Green? To lose one's beloved fiance must be painful enough. Can you imagine Holmes just like looking at the dead rat and watching them walk over it and looking at this painting? Wow! <laughs> but then Miss Green suffered that awful injury and outside her fiance's former lodgings, too. Fate can be very cruel sometimes. Why would you do this to me? That mouse seems to be dead. Look, I didn't notice there before, did you? I think perhaps it drank the medicine that spilled out of the bottle. You're so dumb. But that's the bottle that Miss Queen was about to drink from when we arrived. You, you don't think? Ah, I see you've come to appreciate the true nature of the scene. That of a tragedy about to take place. Yes, I... I think it's falling into place. Please go away. Miss Green, the contents of the bottle you had before it spilt out on the floor, and the poor mouse that drank it has sadly died. <laughs> I think oh. it's clear that that bottle must have contained a powerful poisson. Hmm. Don't worry. I will attend to the mouse presently. That was my biggest concern. Miss Green, were you intending to go the same way as that rodent? To take your own life? Well, to be fair, the rat didn't know what was about to happen. Really gonna do it in a hospital and make it other people's problem? Come on, girl. Once I left... know I'm the worst! <laughs> <laughs> Give me the poison! You... I love this comment in chat. Susato necromancy. <laughs> <laughs> Rise! Rise! She, she just Susato slams the rat out the window. Hey, free rat corpse! <laughs> you would have had to put it to your lips again, wouldn't you? And take in the poison. Hi! Hi! No! Miss Green, please. Please talk to us. No, the poison's out here. 
<laughs> little mean, Jello. I don't know. Look, man, if you're discharged from the hospital and you're gonna do this, which you shouldn't, don't do it here. <laughs> There's an etiquette to these things. Thank I you, Mr. Pet. Sholmes. Oh, this I, is just I know. repeat dialogue. I don't think it's repeat dialogue, but it's a repeat piece of evidence, so we don't need to look at it. Really was a tasteless joke. That wasn't a joke. Uh, that looked like new stuff by the letters. I will look at it in a minute. Ten seconds later, and we would have arrived at a very different scene here. In all probability, we would not have enjoyed this most delightful conversation. Of course, perhaps it hasn't been quite so delightful from your perspective, Miss Green. Hmm. Actually, in a way, now that everything's out in the open, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Tell me, how did you acquire that medicine? Well, with this being a hospital in all, when the doctors come, when the doctor comes to examine me in the mornings, he always leaves the medicine cabinet open for a while, so I snuck this out when he wasn't looking. Wait, why does a hospital have poison? For killing it's patients. Surgery. It conspicuously lacks a label. I wonder what it contains. Poison? I'm afraid I don't really know. But I thought if I drank it, it might just stop the pain somehow. Please, Miss Green, don't talk of such things. Chat, it's Fatalium. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, it seems clear now that it contains Poisson. Yes, that poor little mouse is proof of that. Oh, no. Oh, it's all my fault. What have I done? I shall remove this to my office, Miss Green. I take it you will have no objection? I shall remove this to my orifice, Miss Green. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, none. Okay. Definitely feels as though this card must be relevant. I mean, when we first arrived, Miss Green was standing with it in her hand in what can only be described as a very tense atmosphere. Yes. It may very well be related to whatever incident Mr. Sholmes believes was about to happen here. Okay. Perhaps we should ask Miss Green about it? Okay. Neither the sender's name or address seem to appear to be written on the envelope or the card. Looks like you're right, Siv. That looks like the missing half of the envelope. Yeah. It arrived by post at my home the day before the incident that put me in the hospital here. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Ew. Road at, uh, at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. The 17th of this month? That's the, That's the day you were stabbed on Briar Road. And 5 p.m.? is precisely the time when the incident occurred. The Slug and Salad, yes. A pub on the northern corner of Briar Road. Briar Road being the street that Mr. Garadib's house is on. Does this mean that... Mr. Garadib lives on Briar Road. Incredible. Yeah. Did you know that he looks at the gas meter on the wall a lot? <laughs> we mm. should go talk mm. to him. Yes, I'm sure you've guessed. That day, when I was struck in the back by the knife, I was actually on my way to the slug and salad. Goodness. So, that's what you were doing on Briar Road that day. I'm sorry I didn't say anything before. It hadn't been written yet. <laughs> I think I really will have to ask you to excuse me now. No, we're, we're not going to let you walk off on your own. <laughs> I've told you everything. Yes, I'm very sorry to have had to drag up such painful memories for you. No, it's fine. I'm just miserable now. 
Miss Green, we're, we're going to have to keep you here. Like, we're going to have a doctor watch you 24-7, girl. You need help. Please promise us you won't try to do anything like that again. Yes, don't worry. Your detective friend has the bottle now anyway. Yeah, it's really more the mindset and the intent rather than the item, girl. And besides... I've been stabbed in the back and had a close shave with a bottle of poison and I'm still here. I think I'm destined to see things through to the end. Okay. It might sound a little conceited, but well, that's how all this made me feel. Alright, good luck, goodbye. Thank Leaving you. Miss Green and St. Bartholomew's behind. Guys, we made our way home back to Baker Street with Miss Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes! That's a very pretty background. Oh. Well, it appears we've reached the end of the investigative trail for today. Yes, it's late. And, Mr. Narohodo, did you discover anything that may be of use to you in court tomorrow, do you think? Details about Mr. Shamspear, Mr. Garadab's lodgings, the convict Selden. There are many facets to this case, and we're yet to see to the heart of it, if you ask me. That's my feeling, anyway. I can't help wondering about the results of the analysis. Into Mr. Natsume's tea, you mean? Yes, well, <laughs> will something... I didn't catch that. Well, they find the poison, basically. Well, I fear that either way, it will be hard to escape the grip of our friend Mr. Reaper. Oh dear. Yes, Barak von Zeeks. Well, I wish you every success, of course. And though I was late to rise this morning, tomorrow will be a new dawn. I intend to spring from my bed at the crisp hour and attend the trial. No, don't do that. Mr. Shams, you're going to come? Indeed. Whatever happens, I shall be there. Assuming my eyelids cooperate in the morning. Well, I think we've done all we can. All that's left is to remain focused and keep fighting for Mr. Natsume's cause until the very end. London, the world's most prosperous city, home to some six million people. But away from the razzle-dazzle down back alleys and behind bricked-up windows, the lonely lurk. <laughs> I know this is Rinosuke, but I don't care. Sasaki-san <laughs> had battled long and hard with loneliness during, loneliness during his many months here. And so I felt honor-bound to battle equally hard for my compatriot to lift the curse that gripped him. As Mr. Why are you speaking like this? I've been affected by the curse. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow would be a new dawn for all of us. Bum 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 So we're probably not gonna finish this one tonight. Judging. This by seems like a long one. Yeah. If this, it's more forgivable if there's only three cases in this game. Oh, are there really? Or four, sorry. Oh. Ah, oh, hi. No! <laughs> Hello, freak. Mm. You silly little man. This is it then, Mr. Naruhoro. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Miss Suzato. Suffering Suzuki selfishly sidelined! <laughs> Breaks his own neck. Good oh. morning to you, Mr. Natsume. Good morning! Good morning, locum student Mr. Narahono Esquire! Listen to you two, chatting away happily as if the main player of today's trial isn't here! Why would you do that? <laughs> oh dear, I didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seems so wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Natsume? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because oh, I've attained like spiritual enlightenment. Do I sound like that? The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. What? 
or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. <laughs> I'm a cat. Somebody, somebody in chat, pay attention to me. Somebody talk to me. <laughs> I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow. You'll have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk of your path leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example! Oh, yes, there it is. Inner calm. You, you barely came to see me at all yesterday. I was sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful, long-lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, well, anyway... I intend to set everything straight except me in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. Gay rights! <laughs> I've actually <laughs> reached an important decision myself. Oh? What sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial! Alright. Can, can you not? Can you do it now, please? No! Uh, Mr. Sherms isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think, that he's overslept again. The great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. The friendly <laughs> and your legal representative, the trial's about to begin. Make your way to the courtroom immediately. Please. Please. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Soseki-san's curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client, and keep fighting to the, the very end! That's all! <laughs> we walk in. Chomes is just in a beard in the judge's seat. <laughs> oh, no. This was Yule Yam. Oh, yeah. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Chosen by lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mark my words. I feel obliged to say. I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could just adjust my hat for me. And please... Be as ruthless as you like. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? I don't know. Thieves deserve to die if you ask me. <laughs> Especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light there and lead his flock to a righteous verdict again today. No. Lord Van Zeeks, what can you tell us? <sighs> the prosecution's report, please, for the court, in relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's tea. So he does have the results. I'm going to drinky the tinky. <laughs> a little sip before I give you a tip. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the blackguard in the dark. Pray, allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine here. Yeah! In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This is soap. Guilty. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. <laughs> Somebody in chat, vacation juice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Mr. Notsume brought with him that night. Well, the brains of the yard analyzed it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of strychnine on it, Got or it. any other 
I got it on any other toxic thing. It was good, clean. Oh, great, innocent, we win. No poison at all. In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a revelation. Great. Yeah, so, um, we're done. As I suspected. All right, everyone go home. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Sosa, okay, great. Objection. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word! The water in the ocean is extremely <laughs> salty, Council! Thank you, thanks, thanks point, Your Honor! My point exactly! Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was on a night in question, as the court has already heard. Unfit for drinking, unlike the water in the Thames, which I'm sure is totally safe. Don't look up cholera. <laughs> Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shamspear. Yeah, it's tea. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Oh. <laughs> Very well. I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shamspear? Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailey, show Mr. Shamspear to the stand. Bayleaf is my favorite second evolution Pokemon. Bayleaf! <laughs> oh! Oh! Mr. William Shamspear, the victim of this despicable crime. <laughs> so what, is Sham what is the cholera of the sky? <laughs> That's <okay. laughs> Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a belly full of the foul liquid given in mine innocence. Yes, but as we revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company. Yes. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief. Oh, I've been freaking chat who drinks salt water. What the fuck? Don't do that. I haven't forgotten. Kept all of what? Kept all that about the ice coins is a tiny secret, didn't you? Should I open up sooner? Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once, and let him feel the sting of my tail. Oh, indeed. By dint of vile and cowardly means, have I plotted to further my own ends? I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, a death be well deserved. But would it be, well, would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of Father East of Verona did contrive to plus on me. But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? Mm, verily, my liege, I would most gladly speak. Uh. God, I hate this guy. Very well. Let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. I sucked it out of the air like a filtration sponge! Sucked is spelled S-U-C-C -C apostrophe D. <laughs> the Japanese man did come to my ch- I can't believe Soseki made love to this man. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. "'Twas in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poisson, whilst feigning distraction in our debate, ne'er did, uh, ne did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. 
When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that Poisson be not found in the tea I did pour into the moulds of soap. It's so hard to cold read this guy's dialogue. I'm really impressed at you're how you're doing it, man. You're I'm doing really it. impressed. The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. The normal way for poison to be administered in my experience. What do you think I'm drinking all the time? <laughs> Just kidding. If I wasn't a vampire, that would have killed me. Ha <laughs> Idiot mortals. Shoots lightning at a random juror. Just set the room on fire. <laughs> Quiet. Otherwise, <laughs> it would be disastrous. The prisoner went to mix up the cups, for instance. But I no can turn my hands into bats and F claps F once <laughs> and they just disappear. Let's stop no. this. Let's, uh, come on, this is clearly no one's interested in that. We're talking about a boring case. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. My fangs have killed thousands. <laughs> They're fully automatic. <laughs> <laughs> because... Quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. B. Okay. Did you not search his room? No. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Or making a case in court. <laughs> Let's get turned into bats! <laughs> By now, it should be perfectly clear. A bar or two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused's hands. Uh, so, are we to assume that the soap was poison then? No, I think he's no. just, I think he's straight up lying because Natsume oh. was like, I drank all my tea immediately. Gotcha. And we know that because there's a stain on one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sirs, madams, tis true that I, Shamspear, appear to be a, th a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Hated that. Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have not to lose. Well. I do declare. I love doing Jura number three's voice back and forth with Shamspear because they're like so completely different. <laughs> Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay. Ah! Okay, that's true. Mm, that's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, I'm, like, so sure that's wrong. I'm gonna look that's at- wrong. I'm gonna look at what we have on this teacup so I know what else we need. There is no tea ring on the inside of Mr. Natsume's cup. There's no way I can just present this, right? Like something's gonna be fucky. Yeah. I think I think you should press first. Okay. Either Do way. Do some pressing safe. first. Cause there's no penalty for pressing, right? No, not usually. Alright, then just press everything. Okay. But the teacup Mr. Natsume drank from was found completely empty at the scene. And let's not forget the defendant's maxim, drink tea while it's hot! I did- sounds exactly like that. What an excellent impression. Thank you. I quit being a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I did go from the poisson oh, cup that, that night. There's, there's no voice. There's no money in voice acting. <laughs> and in mine agony, I did writhe uncontrolled. In fits of pain, I did knock the fellow's cup and its contents spilt as blood from a gaping wound, methinks. Though certainly, twas after I had made the coins of ice from his tea. Well. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am. Um, <laughs> I can turn into bats. He's just there, like. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was having a little bat nap. <laughs> An upset cup was found on the table. There is no contradiction oh, here. That's, I mean, I fucked up, it's fine. It's true, there was no tea left in either cup that we found at the scene. But still, something about his statement is troubling me. Yes, of course, I know what it is. It's Mr. Natsume's wise drink tea while it's hot, Maxim, isn't it? Hmm. 
No, I'm not sure that's it. Thank you, witness. Now reiterate for the court what it is that occupied you after your guest had left and before you drank your tea. Hi! Oh. He's the, okay. You have five tries left! Look at them! <laughs> yes, so you could cheat the gas company, in fact. Isn't that right? To cheat or to die. Tis life's only choice. Yes. <laughs> To cheat be the wise choice, and mine occupation be not an ugly one. Prithee, dost thou not see the beauty and the simplicity of the rules? <laughs> no, I don't. And be very sure, sir. Once this trial is over, Altamont Gas will take you to task over this. Legal task. I shall not run. I shall not hide. Sooth to say, I have nowhere to run nor to hide. But, my lady, what wouldst thou with this pitiful player? Oh, I'll tell you what I'd like to do with you. Starting with the shoddy shirt on your back. Mm. Tis time for a Shamsmere dance! <laughs> the harsh world we live in. <laughs> the thieving of the gas was addressed in yesterday's proceedings. The prosecution calls on the defense not to muddy the waters with irrelevancy. Amazing comment in chat. Witness, more like knit witness. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, well done. Consider that a warning, counsel. Yes, my lord. Why am I the one in trouble here? Mr. Shamspear, after the accused returned to his lodgings, you used his tea to make your coins. <laughs> Is that correct? To cheat or to die? I did make my choice many <laughs> moons ago. Many moons! Okay. Uh, All right, chat, keep it in your pants. Guess I'm just gonna keep pressing. Hold it! My dick can become a bad. Okay, if, well actually now I'm interested, go on. If having first made your special <laughs> coin. <laughs> I have not ah, seen- Ah, no, come back, please! I have not seen my dick bat in 200 years. <laughs> a bat crawls in with a cane and oh, glasses fuck. and a gray beard. He's so old. <laughs> what are we doing here, gang? <laughs> Having first made your special coins, it was after two in the morning when you collapsed. That would mean you can't have drunk any tea yourself around that time. Once ensnared by literary debate, naught else can be found in the furrows of the mind. The debate about Romeo and Juliet, you mean. And who was the stronger of the two? Rightly did I pay no heed to the tea as I wrestled with the abominable fellow. I don't remember debates like that when I was studying. Not when I was studying. Oh, sorry. Are you suggesting that neither of you actually drank the tea whilst it was hot that evening? Van Zeek speaks like he's trying to use language he's only heard in stories. <laughs> <laughs> My lord, wouldst thou be privy to some Shamsperian wisdom? Husband, wife, and tea, ought I tepid be? Ah, yes, so very true. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to tea. That is not what I said! I think you and might have been- the moral. What did, he say? what did he say? I don't understand. I don't know either. I think you I might have interpreted that wrongly. I'm no. just giving everyone the benefit mm. of the doubt. The moral of the story is to not judge people. So, w oh. hang on. <laughs> so it's been <laughs> proven that there was no poisson in Soseki-san's tea. And that should be hugely in our favor. But the atmosphere in this courtroom today it feels as though everybody's against us, Mr. Narahodo. It must be the Reaper's Poisson. I'm afraid it's his AOE of hate racism. <laughs> racism <laughs> AOE. <laughs> we don't find a significant flaw in his testimony somewhere. The jury will pounce in fine, Mr. Natsume, guilty. Really feels like we've jumped into the fire here. <laughs> oh! Shut up! What is wrong? <laughs> Silence. Are you saying you saw the moment when the poisson was added to your tea? Uh, to have witnessed the act and then drank the tea? Thou dost describe the actions of a fool. Quite so, quite so. But no one likes going thirsty, do they? Mm, sooner would I die quench it than parch it. 
Would I have the choice? Actually, on the night in question, the water main was frozen, I believe, wasn't it? Were it not for the tea, I in sooth, uh, in sooth I would have... Oh, oh, okay, no, that's right, I read that right. Yeah. In sooth I would have sooner have died frozen than quencheth or parched. Right, no ice coins means no heating. The witness had more than one brush with death on the night in question, it would seem. Remind the court, Mr. Shamspear, as to whether the accused drank any of the tea which he brought with him. With the greatest of pleasure, my liege. It seems like we just need to present it. Oh! Uh, okay, so I'm I gonna just don't want you to get fucked by. Oh, I'll get. F There's no preventing it. I'm gonna uh, go pee, BRB. Much, much like I was. <laughs> Alright. It's better unsweetened. Let's take a look. Never did a drop it's of his own. Book. There is no tea ring on the inside. Like, I feel like we're one set. I've still got this thing open. I'll just. Do you want to tuck it? Uh, what? Do you want to tuck it? No, thank you. Let me just scootin'. Examine the pair of teacups. Yep. Uh, on statement three. Were we right? I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to look at the teacups again. Look how burned I am by this game. I'm, I can't even trust. We're yeah. always right, and I can never trust. I bet it needs to update again. No, maybe not. All right, let's try it. Yeah, okay. Tea and cup. Objection. Objection. You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question, but that's impossible. How, how, how? I don't know that word. Chop logic. Is that just chop logic? I think it's just chop logic. How, 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 chop logic? What is this, ye darky clad fiend? The two teacups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant. If you feel burned by the game, why don't you ever default to pressing every statement? Frankly, I always do that when I'm playing by myself, but it like octuples the length of the game yeah. if I do that. <laughs> when yeah. we're reading it out loud, have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? A type of car? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's clearly, there's a clearly visible ring. It's married. <laughs> yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. I can guarantee Siv would have burst out laughing yeah. at that. <laughs> A missed opportunity. Oh, well. I'm sure there will be more. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right! It's completely clean! And, pretty sir, what makest thou of it? You're so dumb. Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quaffed. Drink. Tea. WHILE IT'S HOT! That's right! Yes, the jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night, and drank his tea in no time. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Great face! If, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea, a ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well. After several hours, the tea w Yeah, after the several hours, the tea was left standing. But, um... In short, Mr. Shamspear, you clearly lied to the court. Get thee to a memory! <laughs> yeah, that means he used his own tea, doesn't it? Mm. As a rule, I fill my hello chalice up to seven times during any one trial. Buddy, you might have a problem. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet, on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shamspear. Y yes my liege Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused's cup. Could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Uh. Could it be that 
Yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene. Oh. A fact that had vanished from your memory until now. Hmm. Faith, my liege, thou art a magician. For verily, tis as though thou hast seen me with thine own eyes that night. Yes, what? I was watching. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan <laughs> to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. And you just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before. I, okay. Are we supposed to believe that? Objection. People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. Yeah, I killed him. Oh, oops. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. Hmm. The prosecution makes a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... Naked. <laughs> The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No. He's just like, he pulls off his cape and says, Oh hell, I forgot my pants. <laughs> <laughs> my lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did dine at Grub's Grubbery Ale House that night, naught did pass my lips but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stupid low as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favourites. A broth as would be <laughs> called soup, and a leaf as would be called salad. <laughs> <laughs> What's a pretty uh patty? As insalubrious a menu as the establishment where it was served. But as... Uh, but you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment is seen to fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. I fucked that one up. But I pray ye wise and noble fellows, ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing, and this be another. Yeah. Yeah. Jurors all, your humble servant Sh Shamspear doth entreat you, punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord! Nope, wrong. My lord, if I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman? I believe we may have been duped by that rotten defense lawyer. By me? I do declare you may be right. I'm a racist. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he's been leading us up the garden path. That's what he's been doing. I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached a decision this time, and we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman. Innocent! What? <laughs> and we'll duly hear the jury's findings. What? No! No, you, you can't yet. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Guilty. 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 Oh, is he Irish? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? <laughs> uh, Sprout, you find a sword. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? <laughs> I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Oh, happy day. Why do I feel terrible about this? Guilty. <laughs> How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its rights to carry out a summation examination. You just like being a bitch, don't you? Oh, you want well. to talk, bitch? Bat dick? <gasps> <gasps> oh, ah, he's crying. Harvest his tears. I bet they sell for a lot. No, they're just little bats. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. 
My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. The trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. I love hearing when Will makes the conscious choice to go even lower. <laughs> <laughs> Jurors, the court calls upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime which he is charged. We're racist! Yeah, that sounds good, yeah! Guilty. It's all right! I'm a man of logic, me, and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. Okay. I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, the team I... I guess I'm going to make him Irish now. Truth be told, the tea my wife serves up for me is a little... sketchy... at times. If nothing else packs the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? I'm gonna see if I can make them fight about the gas. <laughs> I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and its supplies influence decisions somewhat. But never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unassailable as we'd hoped. And Mr. Shamspear was poisoned. There can be no doubt of that. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? Hmm. We need to establish the method by which Mr. Shamspear was a bit as if you put so on. Our only hope is to demonstrate the myth. My essays are getting a little messed up. <sighs> but, but that's surely impossible at this stage. You're such a good actress, Siv. How could this happen? I think it. <laughs> I've turned all of your S's I'm, into bats. I'm just now they are escaping. <laughs> I'm just a th I'm just a thirsty little Looney Tune. <laughs> You'll be found the guilty. Attached. No delays, Council. Proceed with the summation examination. Yeah, give it a try. Be your nose good. Oh! questions with me in the back it's oh. a fucking horror movie still like in the background of hill house you see a secret go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it the cursed specter <laughs> gas can kill you it's lethal we should talk about this i think could we please talk about the poison rather than the gas do you think sir well if you like I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas every time. You'd take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. It doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set him straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding, but I think you'll find poison also can't light or heat up a room. Oh... You're right! <laughs> I hadn't considered that at all! Oh, Innocent! I forgot to shake up me brain cells so they don't together like conkers, they do. Oh, conkers is fucking lit. <laughs> <laughs> Kipper is lit! Young lawyer man. Um, yes? You have a good head on your shoulders. We could use someone like you as our company's legal representative. Dude, do That'll it. Take the job. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like an amazing gig. Well, if I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway. Do it, do it Rianosuke. Get for, that money. Good for you, Rianosuke. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Oh, yeah? You want to elaborate I'll on that? them. Okay, did, that didn't change. Let's uh let's talk about all the gas ones. Pit. Oh, not pit. Sorry. <laughs> this isn't the time or place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, think of the injustice. Air is a gas, and air is free. Why should Altamont gas cost money? God, you are the dumbest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. I can't believe these people are deciding whether I live or die. I can. It makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. 
Well, if it makes your blood boil, then why don't you consider using that to heat your home instead of gas? Checkmate, bitch. I'll be taking that job, Miss Altamont, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the time or place to be ruthless, either. If I might interject here... Honestly, oh, please. I love this lady. Uh, yes, madam. It seems my fellow juror takes issue with the price of our company charges for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. <laughs> what a mistake. I think I missed it. That unkempt oh. moustache, those hutched shoulders. No! Tea and stealing gas. Utterly unforgivable. No, no, no. Mr. Notsume isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on more crimes. Mr. Natsume hasn't been poisoning tea either. Well, anyway, I've quite made up my mind. It's as made up as the price of gas. Fuckers! <laughs> Jesus God. Christ. Well, we're a bunch of petty bastards, aren't we? <laughs> Alright, let's talk to you now. Man, I'm not seeing the, the hole here. I'm not either. Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an, there's an all-out attack underway here, in case you hadn't noticed, against my company's gas. Meanwhile, Soseki, somebody please make this about me! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. <laughs> all I've heard about our wonderful fuel is explosions and poisonings. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about oh. that? We'll talk about Nikola Tesla next, don't worry. Little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. Hmm. Any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. It's a small thing. I actually think this particular judge is my favorite in the series. He's like, exactly reasonable enough. My point, exactly. But the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. Chat, is gas leaking into the courtroom? <laughs> <laughs> we have far more devious reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. Yeah, more girl devious. Boss gas leak and. <laughs> 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 gas leak! <laughs> Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies, not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas, and we deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody is questioning that, madam. Altamont is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see and sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But those devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes and take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours, without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. So do you think that when Garadib got the pipes replaced, he did it with a different company? Oh yeah, maybe. You're probably right. Oh. No. When we visit our customers' houses to collect the money from their meters, Oh. We always have to check whether or not one of these devious companies has been up to its tricks. Oh! oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm having a headache with pictures! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for that. That's from Futurama. <laughs> Very funny line, though. I love it. Do you have something to say about that, Jura number three? Oh, golly, you mean me? I think... Losing track of which juror I am on account of me only being able to count to one. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. I was just thinking to myself with my mouth open. I will contribute. <laughs> <laughs> Bat, bats fire out of his mouth. You'll be back Turn before back dinner. <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> I really did catch him on guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, no. yes. 
I really gave this guy the right voice, didn't I? I just got a little... I read that as railed. I get a little riled about it recently, you see? <laughs> no, that was Go Shamspear. On. <laughs> on Altamont... And that's an Altamont... Altamont? Yes, you dumbass! Altamont gas worker. That wasn't nice. Visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. <laughs> We need to ask to your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in. And do you know what he did? I'm... He shit I'm, on my floor. I'm... What? <laughs> Afraid I have no idea. Yes, you know, it wouldn't be a problem if he was wearing sh uh, patented shit your pants pants from the... Whoa, how did they work? Well, you put on any of your pants. I... I'm... Desperately asking for this trial to move on. I agree. This is horrible. Guilty. No, nope, not what I meant. <laughs> Tell me more about these beshattered pants. No. I do find myself nostalgic for the days when I could still shit. It has Pray. been many moons. Pray forgive the dysentery. Uh, no! He proceeded to take no. one. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. <clears throat> what do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets there. Oh, please, everybody knows. But that was nearly, nearly the death of me, I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. Bat shattered. <laughs> As I said before, these unscrupulous <laughs> other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Someone in chat, next bit, please. You know, maybe I should make Twitch emotes so I can have next bit, please, be an emote. <laughs> Get good mileage out of that one. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Oh, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent prop, uh, the lights of an adjacent property that has no contract with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down a pipe with all his might. And you can guess what happened, can't you? My well, house exploded. Well, if he blew hard that... Wait, you mean... That's right. The lights didn't just flicker. They went out. Along with the stove, gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard, so the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all? I said. So by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network. Oh, of that's why his hands were by the painting, because there's a mm -hmm. lamp above the painting. Mm -hmm. and okay. Th and then when the gas starts flowing again, it just... Well, that might be one reason. <laughs> it starts... It's a room. Mr. Meadowhodo, I think perhaps... Yes, this is most certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three. The defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Oh, well, if you like, I don't mind. Well, I do! I, I, that actually just advanced by itself. Like I said, madam, it's widely known already... Very well, Juror number three. You will amend your statement accordingly. I keep forgetting I'm the judge. Yes, my lord. But I'm not really sure what the point of all this is. Innocent. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what to <coughs> what to pit this with. Uh. Okay. Okay. Ma maybe we could talk to that guy. It's not this girl. Probably first guy. I, I don't think it's the first guy. This is a very, like, I have nothing to do with it. Like, I'm logical. Like, there's nothing going on there. I'm going to guess this guy, weirdly. Let's talk to him. Tell me about your horrible wife. You you mean it's poisoned? Oh, so, oh my god. 
Uh, what does Irish sound like? That's right. It's happened a tidy few times now. You're this is most troubling indeed. It's always days just like this one when I don't get any wages. This isn't really Irish. It's fine. <laughs> I get <laughs> a tea time, see, and I see her doing it. My wife, she gets that devilish look on her face, and she slips some white powder into my cup. And Jesus. And you drink it anyway. I was brought up proper. I was. Someone gives you a cup, or you drink it. <laughs> And what no! happened to you? What did it taste like? It was god awful, believe you me. Salty as hell! Oh. <laughs> mm. Then I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea <laughs> was salt. <laughs> the patience of a saint! That no. has the same expression as the, like, look how hard I can piss stick figure. <laughs> So she do she doesn't even care. <laughs> do it. Doesn't even care enough to poison me properly, eh? Unbelievable. Let's move on, please. <laughs> oh, nothing else past the victim's lips. Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's. Wait, I press it first. You're probably mm. right. I never learned my lesson. <laughs> Does that mean that if the victim could be shown to be having ingested B, then you'll change your leaning? Mm, sorry? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just saying if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on that night. What's the matter with you? <laughs> sorry? Oh, sir, if nothing else passed the victim slips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Haven't you been listening to me at all? I feel that there's an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here. Compared to the other jurors who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to the proceedings far more intently. I suppose. The trouble is... He has selective hearing. Exactly, but still, this juror may well be the key to the breakthrough that we so desperately need. Alright, so I don't get anything new from that. Oh, this is hopeless. There's no way for me to appeal to these people. I do think the only way we shall have a to her is by exposing the way with which she is with her vulgar. Return to me, bat! <laughs> we have to prove that it happened some other way and not via Mr. Natsumi's tea. Yes, I know. The trouble is, I have absolutely no idea how it did happen. Mr. Narahodo, I wonder if perhaps there's something you might have forgotten. Oh? Like what? It's important to watch everyone. Okay, th this is the this is the loop. There, uh, she's she's just telling us, hey, you might need to do a pursuit, which we already did. I I think it's I think we can do the old man and the and Joe yeah. yeah three. Yep, I think so now for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it was still good to press. Yeah, no, I don't fault you guys for being like we should probably check, right? <laughs> Objection. Oh, wait. I mean... Yeah, I like this horribly spelt comment in chat. Soseki poisoned he dick. <laughs> <laughs> Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To whose statements do you refer, counsel? The judge is, like, so on the edge of his seat. It's just like, oh my goodness, a lie! <laughs> <laughs> juror number six. Did you hear what juror number three just said? Eh? Well, it, yes, of course. I heard him mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsume's tea did, in a manner of speaking, pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding into the wall light at the scene to see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what f your floundering would result in this time, but the mouth of a gas pipe? <laughs> Scotland Yard have enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. I could see his lower jaw just when you said that. <laughs> what a piece of work is a man? What is a man? What are you trying to say, say Mr. Sam Spear? What speaketh thou? Prithee? Is it not strange and strange? That is, is that what pretty? I say to thee, sir! I thought I'd been quite clear, but let me put it another way. <clears throat> the strychnine could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good, good 
lord! Well, I taste... <laughs> I can I can never remember how to go from any flavor of British to Irish. Got to think of a, a fucking Atlas from what's his not uh, Bioshock. Bioshock, yeah. Are they tasty then, gas pipes? Is that what he's saying? Oh, is the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas? We're so dumb. We're so <laughs> dumb. Perhaps no actress will perform a kiss scene with him. Hmm? For shame, madam, speaking my fancy. I assure you, I am not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes! Objection! Objection. Ah! This is no submission, examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Nipponese friend's conjecture. Oh, a little more. To begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. It's impossible to reach. <laughs> Van, Van Zeeks gets out from behind the desk and his feet are like one <laughs> inch long. <laughs> In order to have placed his lips to the pipe that feeds it, he would have to be a contortionist. Like what? this, puts his leg up on the desk. Whoa. I, I am able to bend my legs for my knees are bats. These are empty assertions. There is no possible proof that the man did as you said. I wasn't it done. It's true. I have no proof that Mr. Shamsmere put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shamsmere has been doing something in front of that lamp on his wall. Either I'm getting a guilty or I'm getting another gay man. <laughs> Either way, I win. And I have evidence to prove it. All right, you've got our attention, lad. I'd like to see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let's see this evidence then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. Ow! <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's this photo. Take that! What the? These are, wait, what are they called? Uh, skinnies that were found at the scene. Skinnies, Council! I've never <laughs> heard of such things! The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. Permit what? what? Fingies? Fingies! We call them fingies, Oh, oh, fingies! It's alright. My lord, this is an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I feel like that's not really helping my case here. You it reveals all the... I... Shush, 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 please. It reveals all the places that Mr. Shamsmere touched in his room. You think you can shush me? S's turn to bats. <laughs> I can't shush. Shush, 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 shush. Why don't you tell me about this great detective one more time? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? Mm, well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Sholmes fella, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skinnies in many places that you would expect. On the table, on the costumes. I, man, that, this photograph, I, it makes the joke itself. However, Mr. Shamspear also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there. Indeed, multiple hand, 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 mm? Skinnies. Skinnies appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could you have been appreciating the artwork, perhaps? Oh, someone's uninitiated. At first, my colleagues thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front A of... Dick. Oh, 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 Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamspear has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall. <laughs> Roy, what have you been up to? You nut? 
me do. Stop. Stop. I will not. <laughs> You're giving a blow when you look up. You nut. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'd ask the court to recall juror number fours earlier. So, most of the time, it's Will and I fucking around and making making a, a gross mountain out of a regular mohill. No, this one's Come too on. easy. They're, they're, giving, they're giving you some gravel to work with here. This was handed to us. Me, what did I say? <laughs> I want them to stop. You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you'll recall, if you'll recall, juror number three recule. statement, recule. In chat says, I think we need to hire someone to get Jello's mind out of the gutter. That's been my job for four years, and now it's Amy's responsibility because I'm not getting anywhere. And I will say, I think Amy does a better job than any of one of making me genuinely feel ashamed about making terrible jokes. Because as I was telling him the other night, she has an audible silence, an audible glare, <laughs> but. Sometimes. <laughs> Me? What now? <laughs> when the gas worker visited his home, blew with too much force into the pipe. He caused all the lights and the gas stove to go out. That's what keeps... Okay, I only just figured out that's yeah. what keeps knocking out the gas in Saseki's room. And gas start leaking into the rooms. Obviously, that incident was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamspear were to have blown hard into the gas pipe in his room... <laughs> Get this man to leave! He could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Crikey! Hey, there's an Australian thing. Uh, are you suggesting that the man purposefully caused the gas to... Objection. Ooh, dear, leave a bit more for daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Well, you know like someone's to... going to clip that. <laughs> so, that's fine. I should, I should have referred to myself as baddie. Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination, I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. What is the meaning of this, Lord Van Zietz? This curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense, the so-called skinnies. Clearly, <laughs> that cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. Oh, my mouse died. Give me two seconds. Uh -oh. Clearly, that cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. Clearly, that cannot be no! accepted as any form of usable Here, evidence. Here, let me in smack him. He's stuck. <laughs> you oh, broke him! You know, I have many bats that help me with various tasks. One helps me with my little cravat. It's very difficult to tie, but oh. thankfully, he is a master of fashion. Do you have a bat that does your hair? Yes. What's his <laughs> name? His name is Bertwald. <laughs> That's a good bat name. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very proud of him. Did you name I would him? Be too. Yes, I've named all of my bats. I'm back. And how many bats is that? Uh, one, two, uh, Good, about a distracted. about a batter's dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm batting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's an exciting new forensic technique developed by a great detective. Oh, I forgot that lady's really into homes too. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Uh, hmm. Certainly even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes. Yeah, but like, there's a comment in chat! And there's a little bat that keeps you from saying slurs. <laughs> Mr. Van Zeeks, please don't say it. Ah, knee bonies. Where you go, it's a lot better. <laughs> 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 Cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. It's so clear that there's handprints, though. Oh, please, my lord, if I may. Miss Suzato. It was not the defense's intention to submit the skin skinnies as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detectives, and we just wanted to show off Mr. Holmes' new thing, you know? This, this is a really good, uh, really good deflection. As a tool by which to explain the possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good cover, Susano. Uh. A 
And if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen. And I'm sure the jurors would agree. Hey. I need to say slur You're rising. You're all right! <laughs> Whether those strange handprints are a significant clue or not, it's down for us to decide. Whoa, why is this on fire? Oh. Black magic! Jura number oh, three. Oh, oh, yes, I do declare the great detective's investigation results sound absolutely something. I didn't catch that. sorry. And I want to hear what that shady actor fellow has to say about those shady hand skinnies. Yeah, you got it. All right, we got two of them. No. What's the matter with you two? That was foolhardy. We're over here. Well, you say it, you know, it looks a bit different. No, wait, you had his look. Ah, bonk. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahudo. It's just one more juror changes his or her mind. And Mr. Natsumi's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Miss Suzato, but I couldn't have done it without you. I wasn't oh, giving yes. you any credit. It will. Yes, it was me. It was you who identified the clue, after all. This is very much your success. I have to oh. go to the bathroom. <laughs> have you heard of his new invention? No, nope, no. Why, Mr. Shamspear, you appear to be losing your composure. Just one more juror, Mr. Naruhodo. You can do it. Guilty. Very well. Continue, counsel. Uh, new defense, just as a reminder to all of you who are still on guilty, if you choose innocent, you'll be on the white side. Oh, innocent! Innocent! We are British after all! Yes, yes, very British! I guess you should press the first guy. Yeah, I know you're probably right now. Shit your pants, Shem Spear! <laughs> press. They cast a spell at me! All the evidence, you say? That's right. And there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese man with the big mustache. Nothing. You want to talk? Says the English man with the bigger mustache. But the defense just demonstrated another possible explanation for the events on the night in question. What do you make of that? What, you so called skinnies? It's an exciting new forensic investigation technique developed by the great detective himself. One of the. In not to defend the people who are like you can't just take this new forensics bullshit, but one of the most infuriating true crime related documentaries I ever watched when I was studying for Sweetwater was one where they had like literally definitely convicted the wrong guy for like a couple years, uh, and the big deciding factor piece of evidence was like bite mark forensics, Ooh. which are like not an accepted thing anywhere now because they're just like. It's, it's just not a thing that leaves enough of a real print. And the dude who was like, I'm at the forefront. I've convicted a bunch of people with these was just like such a bastard. It was horrible to watch him like defend his pride for it. Real oh. piece of shit. Um, the numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. The what? Oh, I'm so sorry. The newest skinnies. These are the newest skinnies. Let me tell you the skinny. <laughs> oh. And if Mr. Shamspear had indeed put his... Oh, was it the bologna sandwich? No? I actually have no idea what you're talking about. And if Shamspear had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the knife in question, it can't be denied that there's a possibility that's where the poison was. Well, yes. I won't deny that it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. And besides... Yes? Even if the fellow has been up to some mischief with the gas pipe dozens of times before, it doesn't mean he got up on the same shenanigans the night in question, does it? Oh. Oh, but it does. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my stance. Hmm, uh -oh. something. <laughs> you make a very valid point, sir. What? Oh, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait! Look, you've got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. If, and if, if you and your Japanese cohorts can, that is. Uh, just leave our nationality out of this, please. Mr. Naruhodo, he is being racist! If we can't substantiate something, I'm afraid the jurors that changed their minds before may very well change them back. What can I do? Is there any proof I can give here? 
Can I show that Mr. Shamspear... I have supporting testimony from Garadib? Yeah. I think it's that. I'm just going to check. Yeah. I have the guide open. Yes. Some journal number seven. Yep, I have testimony. Oh, though uh, I picked the wrong person. Oh. Windows are awkward. You know, in truth, I don't have any evidence to support my theory. However... There is witness testimony that substantiates it. Was that in testimony? This is incredible! Whose testimony? <laughs> yes, it's all connected. Everything is Link. D Warped Lamp is playing Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Spec Ops edition. A person whose testimony revealed details about the gas in the Gerrida residence that night. It's actually Soseki. Which is not wrong, I guess. Mm. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of proceedings, yeah, that seems weird, but okay, I agree, but it's not wrong. He did mention it. He didn't mention it that night in particular, but uh, at the very beginning of the proceedings here in court, oh no, maybe he did. Mr. Natsume said the following. I'm a cat. This comment in chat. So Suki's art is quite handsome in a rat way. Aww. Even on that fateful <laughs> night it happened. Okay. When I returned from Mr. Shamspear's room, I lit my gas stove, climbed into bed, but before long the stove went out and somebody tried to kill me. Kill me. <laughs> on the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out. In fairness, it's been a week. So I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Oh, golly. So, so that Shamspear fellow blew gas into the gas air uh, into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose. Now just hold your horses there. What would he do that for? Mm. Mr. Foreman. What the what is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed whilst this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet. However, you must surely agree that there is more to this case than meets the eye. Um. <sighs> Fair enough. Like I said on the outset, I'm a man of logic first and foremost. That's four jurors leaning towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. No, I'm tired. Guilty. Oh, I'm going to bed. As the defense has rightfully indicated, the summation examination has concluded with a majority of jurors altering the decisions. Two jury members now call guilty, four now call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted and in accordance with the law of this land, I hereby order the continuation of this trial. Mr. William Shamspear. My lord, how can thy humble Shamspear serve thee? What say you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? So God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. But your handprints have made a tidy... That's not it. I'm never going to get it. A tidy mess over the wall there. How do you explain that, eh? Oops. There was a bat hiding in that bottle. I saved him. I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been sighed enough already. Juror number five. Oh, me? As I went to some pains to point out already, a print from the self-professed detective's toy has no place in a British court of law. Ah. As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas lamp with his hands against the wall remains, at this time, <laughs> an established conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just order the mouth of the gas pipe feeding that lamp in Mr. Shamspear's room to be examined. If there are traces of poor, okay. Objection. What appears to be extremely simple is my Nipponese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check for the presence of poison in the tea, some remnants of tea were required. Yes. 
Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe, it would have completely evaporated by now, making any analysis impossible. Ugh, I didn't think of that. In any case, Counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipework where he lived? There's only one possibility that I can think of, and that is to use the leaking gas to commit murder. Order! Order! Counsel! Precisely whose life do you propose this man was plotting to end? The answer couldn't be simpler. Now we've unraveled the mystery this far. Mr. Shamspear wanted to end the life of our friend. Take that! If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I live around those parts myself. Nope. <laughs> so I know what it's like. I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lid is pretty much suicide. You'll freeze to death in no time. Mr. Garadab, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shamspear was trying to end. Outrageous! Radical! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mm. Mr. Natsume isn't the villain in this case. It's- he's the victim this man was trying to murder! Good gracious! Mm. Objection. In fairness, this is a pretty insane accusation. <laughs> the accused is actually the aggrieved? Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely... That the accused is the aggressor here. What? How can you still claim that? Let us indulge your fancies for a moment and assume that there was indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question that then arises is who put it there? Who did put it there? Who did oh, there? It's a good question. The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was my poisoning bat, <laughs> was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. I mean, not necessarily. If the assailant were unaware, uh, how would he or she have known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? So now we must ask, how could anyone have known of Mr. Shamspear's murderous design? People accusing the cat. Uh, you mean to suggest- What the cat doing? What a cat doing? Naturally, the sole possible answer to that question couldn't be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. What? In other words, the person who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was a clear retaliatory action, attack, and as we've explained, intended murder is not at all a crime in this universe. <laughs> can only have been the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Uh, uh. Wouldn't mm. the gas itself have meant yeah. poison? I yeah. think they did specifically find strychnine in him. Ah, okay. Whatever Mr. William Shamspear may or may not have contrived to do, mm. he was nevertheless the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. And the only person who could possibly have perpetrated that attack is the accused, Mr. Natsume. Chat, it was Puss in Boots! He <laughs> was the murderer! Yes, Puss on in Boots. Have you heard of him? <laughs> the defense counsel's theorizing has failed to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established, that suspicion is greater than ever. Will these videos be on the YouTube channel? Uh, no. I'm not gonna edit down this game. But you'll still find the bots here. Would you not agree, my Nipponese friend? <laughs> that Van Zeke's voice cannot be easy on the throat. Guys, Will just sounds like this. That's just how <laughs> I do, baby. 
I want to go home. Me too. How did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? Get up. <laughs> Get your ass off the stand. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings against us again. And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage. I hate you, Suzata. <laughs> what advantage? Oh, really? No! No! But you are my best friend! Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm sorry! I was doing a no, bit- no, 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 why? Well, it would seem that somebody's put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shanspear's room. So we must name that person now and absolve Mr. Natsume of guilt. You mean, name the true culprit? I know it might sound impossible. But if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Mr. Natsume's fate will be sealed once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence, the poison. It's all pointing to a particular person now. The prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you'll make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. What? Oh, you don't worry, don't you? Oh, you're right, I've screwed it up anyways, keep going. Hey, innocent. There is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The, the true culprit? A term found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate great detectives, my Nipponese friend. But why not? This farce has gone on for so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before its disappointing climax. You'd know a few things about that, wouldn't you? Thank you. How oh, dare you! <laughs> Tell us, my learned Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Your game theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? It's gotta be, right? Like, there's there's that's, no other that's options. the only person I can think of. So... The name of the person responsible for the poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear is, I believe, Miss Olive Green. Miss Olive Green? Miss Olive Green? I do feel as though I've heard that name in the recent past, Council, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green? The woman from six days ago? Dead. The victim in the recent case of stabbing on Briar Road. An incident for which Mr. Natsume was arrested, I hasten to add. Oh, of course, yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days, I believe. But I heard she regained consciousness two, ga two days ago. Someone in chat, I was so, I was stupid. I chose everyone but her. I don't think it's like terribly obvious. It's it's kind of just like a, I don't know. You're the only character in this case who hasn't been on the stand yet. Yeah. And I hardly need to remind the court that Mr. Shamspear's poisoning took place three <laughs> days ago. Given that the woman was lying comatose in a hospital bed at the time, she appears to have a rather fine alibi. True. On the night, the 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 incident, the, 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 that's all, folks. Miss Green was in the hospital, unconscious. So, on the face <clears throat> of it, it would seem that she couldn't be responsible. But still, can you, I know this didn't happen, but can you imagine if Olive was like, "I'll need an, I'll need an alibi." I know that that couple at the top of that building hates each other. If I stand here, a knife will fly out and kill me. <laughs> because that's just my luck. My colleagues and I visited Jello in, in LA. It'd be like, my <laughs> colleagues and I visited Miss Green in the hospital yesterday, and we found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison. And there is another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought in to, to she be brought to witness stand court do <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there go my bats again. Tell me, Mr. Shams. Ah! Oh! My lord, pray what be thy bidding? Ten quid, twenty quid Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Uh no, never heard of her. 
Judging by the look on Mr. Shamsby's face, I think perhaps he genuinely doesn't know her. At least not by name. As the voice of Her Majesty's prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my learned Nipponese friends farce through to its conclusion. I appreciate that. You should. The prosecution requests a short recess, my lord. I have an appointment with the monkey bars. In order to subpoena... <laughs> yes, Miss Miss Olive Green. One day I will be tall enough to climb them, but for now I have to use my bat form. <laughs> I thought you were saying use my bats, and he just like holds on to the feet of two bats who then hang on to the <laughs> monkey bars and he swings with that. Indeed, my lord, one hour should be sufficient. Very well, I grant the request. Excellent. I hope. The defense has made a most extraordinary accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid the defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of the court's attention. Thank you, counsels. We reconvene in one hour. Court is adjourned. Yahaha. Ha. To bid you continue. <laughs> Casting spells again, are we? It's dark magic. It's dark, dark magic. magic. Quack, quack. I go pee again. Joyful, jubilant, jumping jacks! Oh, Mr. Natsume, I'm so pleased for you. Locum student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire, and non-locum judicial assistant, Miss Mikotobo Esquiress. Now, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent, and proof that my tea is innocent. Ah, oh, good morning, my dear fellows. Ah, Herlock Sholmes. May you drink my tepid tea and fall forever silent. I killed him. I did it. I thought that she was innocent. Oh, right. Oh, I forgot we started it. I forgot we started at four. We probably should stop. I have the energy to keep going, but I'm at least four and a half hours ahead of Yam and Sif. Uh, we can we can always wait for Siv to get back and and well I mean well I guess we should just ask Yam are are you done to keep going or like if you're not um, that's totally fine. I can go for a little longer. I don't know if there's gonna be a little longer. I think it's at least two hours more. Oh. Yeah. Then no. <laughs> okay. Then no. Well, we had a we had a to be continued and this this is a pretty pretty solid stopping point. I guess I, I already saved the to be continued right. Uh, I would save again just because, like. Yeah, we got we got a lot done today. I'd say like an hour and a half, but still, yeah, you say that probably having played the game, not reading it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll finish this next week, I guess. Hooray! Uh, bye.